We're going to go ahead and call our town board meeting to order May the 3rd, 2021. At this time, I'm going to call on Commissioner William Harris uh, to lead us in the pledge. But I'm first of all going to call on Commissioner Smith, uh, Larry Smith, to lead us in the invocation. All stand. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Lord, we're thankful that our meeting is beginning to look a little bit different. Lord, where folks can start, see where our department heads can come in and join with us, Lord. And Father, we thank you for that. Thank you for the progress that's being made in our communities across the state and nation against this pandemic, Lord. Uh, we got a ways to go, but we are thankful for where we're at today. Father, we do pray for wisdom tonight. Uh, we have a very ambitious agenda tonight, and I pray you'll give each of us wisdom as we listen uh, to make the right kind of votes that affect our citizens here in this community. Lord, tonight is also a special night that we're honoring one of our own, uh, our former town attorney, Mark Kumalander. Lord, we're thankful for what he's meant to each of us in our lives, what he's meant to this town. We're just thankful that you sent him our way with his willingness to serve and serve he did, and we appreciate that so much. We just pray that you'll be with him and his family as they enjoy many, many years of retirement. Father, again, I just ask you to give us wisdom tonight. We pray that everything that is done tonight will be pleasing in your sight. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, <clears throat> I will ask our town manager, Adam Mitchell, uh, to review the meeting protocol for public participation as it relates to this virtual meeting. And we will be kind of gradually starting to move through uh, COVID and coming out until full meeting sometime in June, I think is the plan. That is our plan thus far, yes, sir. Um, but Adam. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, all attendees that have joined the meeting tonight have joined muted. There is a public comment period near the beginning of the meeting, and there are three public hearings scheduled for this evening. The time to address the town board on any matter not the subject of a scheduled public hearing is during the public comment section of the town board meeting agenda. If the public wishes to address the town board during either the public comment period or the scheduled public hearings, they will need to notify the town host that they wish to speak. For the public's benefit that may be joining the meeting tonight via the Zoom application, if you wish to speak, please press the raise hand button in the Zoom app. If you're joining the meeting via telephone, please press star nine to raise your hand. After you have raised your hand, you will enter into a queue. When the time for public comment period begins, Mayor Byrne will ask the town host to recognize you to speak by calling out your name or the last four digits of your telephone number. You will be unmuted at this time and invited to address the town board. We ask you to begin your comments by clearly stating your name and address for the public record. The public is asked to keep all comments to three minutes so that all that wish to speak can be heard in a timely manner. Once you have finished addressing the town board, you will be muted for the remainder of the meeting. And this concludes the protocol for tonight's meeting, Mayor. Thank you, Adam. Item 3A, approval of the minutes of the April 20th, 2021 regular scheduled town board meeting. Mayor, make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Got a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, signify, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. <clears throat> Item 4A, recognition of years of service, former town attorney Mark Cumberlander. Uh, I will ask Mark um, to come forward uh, at this time.
it is with great pride that I uh, present this plaque uh, this evening uh, to Mark Cumberlander, um, our retiring uh, town attorney uh, of more than 20 years of service. And uh, Tanya is here, and I want to thank her for allowing her, for allowing him to spend all these nights with our town board and not at home. Um, Mark is an exceptional person, did an exceptional job during a period of time that our town was growing and changing and evolving um, from a sleepy little town to now one of the metro towns or cities in North Carolina. And I want to tell you a couple things, and I'm going to try to keep my thoughts brief so I can let Mark say a word or two. Um, one, when you think about attorneys, I've always thought you got what you paid for. And in Mark's case, he was always fair to the town but his experience and what he did for our town was unprecedented during a period of time of growth and keeping our expenses down and always keeping our town first in any decision. He was an encourager of all of us uh, for better government here in Fuqua Verena. And I've been mayor now for a good number of years, and I can tell you no other person has meant so much to me during my tenure uh, as the mayor of Fuqua Verena than Mark Cumberlander. And he's done it with grace and dignity, and the way that you would be proud of seeing a situation that was not fancy, that was not necessarily good, get resolved. And he had fun doing it. I don't know that all of it was fun, but <laughs> <laughs> most of the time he says it was fun. But um, I can tell you this, it was appreciated by this mayor and he will always be remembered uh, for the hard work and the dedication uh, to Fuqua Verena and making Fuqua Verena uh, a better place. Um, we have a, we got a couple plaques here. One that will go on the outside wall as you come into uh, our town hall besides Jack Center, uh, who retired, good gracious, <laughs> a pretty good, <laughs> when you took over. <laughs> November of 92. So um, Mark uh, goes beside a, a very esteemed uh, attorney. And I would say this, Mark was recognized by the North Carolina League of Municipalities as being one of the best town attorneys in the state. He was always asked advice on different things all across the state. One of the things that we have to recognize is they look at us, our community, and they look at things that were not necessarily changing. And our attorney was one of those stabilizing forces in Fuqua Verena. And it kept us very consistent and on the mark. And I always appreciated that. Adam is going to help me here. We've got one um, that is for Mark uh, to take to his home. Um, and, you know, it does. Uh, I remember Mark many years ago when I was at Fidelity Bank and Mark came to, uh, came to town. And uh, he was one that right away uh, made Fuqua Verena home. And everybody in town um, really appreciated 
what all that he did, whether it was a deed of trust or helping him with a legal opinion or a legal matter. Uh, Mark had a way of doing things that was just uh, terrific. The big one here, and I don't, maybe you better give me this one back and I'll, Adam and I'll switch, because this one I know, this, one's, this heavy. one's heavy. But this one right here, great uh, rendition uh, of Mark as he looks today. Uh, it doesn't look like he did when he first came to Fuqua Varina in, in 80, 88. 88. Wow, that seems like yesterday. You had a, he had a little, <laughs> little bit of hair then. <laughs> But um, uh, I've got one more thing that I want to give him, but I want to hear, uh, I want to let Mark talk a little bit. Y'all have heard me, or Adam, do you want to say a word or two, please? Okay. Okay. All right, here we go, and I'll hold it. I try to. <laughs> this thing's heavy. Right, thank you, Mayor and fellow board members. Uh, I'm going to turn away from the camera because I, I like looking at you. <laughs> and, uh, I like looking at you for 27 years, and I like looking at you now. And I just want to thank you so much for the honor and the privilege to have re represented this board and the town and other boards uh, for all these many years. Um, it's just been my honor and privilege. There have been difficult times, and there have been great times. And that's just the nature of life. And so uh, I would say to you that in nearly 50 years, the town has had two law firms to represent the town. And I think that speaks highly of the continuity that this board brings to the community. It's that continuity that puts you in a position to hire great staff, such as Adam and his, his staff. It puts you in a position to get number six rankings. It puts you in a decision to do water and sewer infrastructure and uh, the, nor the Northwest Judd Parkway is being completed. That's, that's a vision of many years ago. Your public uh, service center, South Park. Um, I can just go on and on and on, the art center. So it's those things happen because of good poli policy decisions by this board and the continuity that you bring. And so I thank you for your years of service and um, Appreciate the honor to to have represented each of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, okay. Let's see if we can. The next uh, the next item um, is a very special one that comes from all of the citizens in Fuqua Arena, all our town board. And it comes from the mayor. Um, it is the key to the city. And it is only given uh, to those folks that distinguish themselves. Uh, over an extended period of time, um, and Adam, help me open it. And I want to read, well, we'll let Mark help me here. We're running out of hands here. Adam's got this thing over here, and they're, they're heavy. I can tell you that. Why don't you set them down? I mean, they, I'm happy to. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> What I say to people um, that I give the key to the city to, um, they say, well, what doors does it unlock? You know, what? I say it doesn't unlock any doors, but it does unlock all of the hearts of the citizens of Fuqua Arena. That's a very special, special key. I'm gonna read this, and it's <coughs> kind of um, something that we've put together and, and it's, a, it's something that's really important and it gives you a little bit of the history of the key, what the meaning of the key to the city. The key to the city is an honor bestowed uh, by a city upon esteemed residents and visitors and it is symbolic, a symbolic gift from the mayor 
The tradition dates back to many evil times when wall cities were guarded during the day and they were locked at night. The key symbolizes the freedom of the recipient to enter and leave the city at will as a trusted friend of city residents. It's with great gratitude uh, the town of Fuqua Arena honors you, Mark, with the key to the city for helping to make Fuqua Arena a dash more. Congratulations to you. Pleasure. Yes, sir. You're welcome. And I, why don't we get Tanya to come up here too for just a second? She's back here filming, so we'll we'll get her to come. And uh, this is uh, she's the brain trust. I mean, she's an attorney too, and she helped over the years, you know, with many things. Uh, I'm, I know for Mark, and um, but great team made a difference in Fuqua Arena and a trusted friend with the key to the city. Adam, do you want to say anything? Okay, good. You know, I might make an additional comment or two. Um, but i tell you what I would like to do. I know Commissioner Harris served with him for a good number of years. You might want to make a comment or two, and we'll kind of go around the room. Marilyn has certainly known him, and Jason, an attorney, and Blake. So let's have a comment or two from everybody. Well, actually, I've been knowing Mark uh, prior to his Okay, now, technology. Yeah, I was saying now I, I have known Mark prior to his tenure with the town. I, I was working uh, at the courthouse and I was working in an alternative sentencing program at that time for a nonprofit for drug offenders and Mark at that time was part of the district attorney's office. And that would have been 90, I mean, 1987 or 88 somewhere during that particular time. And then uh, when he moved to Fuquay and started working with the town, I had some history with Mark and I knew Mark was capable, competent, and efficient. And then when he took over after the reign of uh, Mr. Center, there was no lapse in service and effectiveness. I mean, he transitioned very smoothly and he's guided us through the years and I'd like to say congratulations to you, and it's always been a pleasure that our paths have crossed, and I wish you and your family, Tanya and the boys, the very best. Mm -hmm. 
Commissioner Smith, you have any words of wisdom for us? You were <coughs> kind of in that law enforcement realm. Ram. Yes, sir. Uh, my, my, my relationship with Mark was a little different than maybe some of you guys because I've only served a short time on the board with Mark as our town attorney. But I was the police chief for 10 years when he was the town attorney, and we got to know each other very well during those 10 years. Uh, you know, plethora of things, uh, critical incidents, personnel issues. But I can say this, that no matter how tough the problem was that we were working on, at the end of the day, it hadn't been a bad day because I got to spend it with Mark Kumalander. We got to be great friends, got great counsel, and I always could go home at night and sleep well knowing that whatever problem we were facing it was in Mark's capable hands. So thank you very much for that. And like Commissioner Harris, I wish you and your family nothing but the very best. Thank you for all you've done for me personally and for the town of Fuquay, Brina. We really appreciate it. Uh, Commissioner Gardner. Well, when he, when he came around just a few minutes ago, I thanked him for bringing me along when I was a newbie. I appreciated that a lot. And um, I also knew you, um, certainly before I came to the town board, you and Tanya both, and uh, you've always been um, contributed to this community and been a servant to this community, and we appreciate your time and your expertise in guiding us through um, a time when we've we had we had started this period of unprecedented growth and we've had a lot of your, your job changed a lot over those years i think so we just thank you for all you've done for us and do wish you and your your family the best commissioner wants you another attorney here mark i just i wanted to thank you for your service to the town uh, i want to thank you for the integrity you bring to the profession and the wealth of knowledge you're a role model for other attorneys, and I, I just remember when I came on the board, I thought, that man knows so much, so much knowledge and, and so much experience, and uh, if I could be half the attorney that you are, I, I'd consider myself successful. So I, I appreciate that. I appreciate your service to our community, and I, I think that um, we were just so very blessed for, to have you for all those years, for 27 years. and. I was so very blessed to be able to work with you for seven to eight of those. So thank you so much, and I hope you, that you really enjoy your retirement. Mayor Pro Tem Massengill. Thank you. <clears throat> Mark and, and Tanya, both I've known you all a long time, and we often get together, and, and we always end up laughing about um, swim team and where I was with the older kids on the team, and your kids were on the swim team. and. We all had fun running around our, in our Speedos back then. Mark, you did not wear your Speedo, that I recall, out there to, at the pool, but you know, that's a different, different story. But yeah, then I got to know you better in, our, in my adult life and, and on this town board with you and spending time there with you. And I appreciate your counselorship that you have provided to me since being on the board and, and getting to, to know you as an adult versus as, as a kid. So thank you for your years of service. Now you'll have a good time in the sunset and make sure that whatever Tanya's to-do list is done promptly, quickly, efficiently, and when she's ready to go on a trip, take her on lots of trips. I gotta enjoy your time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I wanna ask uh, our present attorney, uh, uh, James Adcock, um, if he has any words of uh, wisdom. Well, he, I have a lot of good stories and things I could tell about him, but it may not be appropriate for tonight. <laughs> but uh, I, um, I've been working in some capacity with Mark and Tanya for probably 16 years. I worked through college, law school, and practiced alongside them and learned a lot from Mark. You know, some of it was about the law, a lot of it was about life and how to manage people and how to understand people and how people work together, sometimes how they don't work together. <laughs> And I appreciate that time and miss having him here in Fuquay, but know that there's a time that you need to go retire and enjoy yourself instead of working 60 hours a week like we used to do. But um, it's been a great pleasure. It's been a good transition, I think, with the town. We worked a lot alongside each other early on, and I hope we can continue to provide the same amount of service that we, that we have in the past. Thank you, Mark. You're doing a great job, and we appreciate it. Uh, James and um, you know just in kind of closing um, uh, about Mark um, from a mayoral role um, 
Mark has helped our town in critical times, um, that I work closely with him um, in such a way that it was made my job um, easy. And I, I will never forget it because we were, we had gotten into ditches a time or two, but we were able to pull on through and pull out and push on. Mm -hmm. And um, I appreciated his advice and, you know, how we worked through um, some critical, critical issues. Uh, our goal is to make our town the very best that we can be and uh, to be a dash more. And um, Mark has certainly done that for us. Now it's up to the rest of us and James <laughs> and, and Adam uh, to keep it on track and um, keep moving it, uh, moving the ball forward. But thank you, Mark. God bless you. Yes, sir. Okay, we're going to move right on then. Fiscal year 22, operating budget and five-year operating capital plan presentation. More information about this agenda item will be presented by Town Manager Mitchell, uh, maybe Assistant Town Manager Matthews, and Assistant Town Manager Seymour, and or uh, Finance Director Crabtree. Okay, Adam. <laughs> All right. Um, so, at uh, about a week and a half ago, I presented to the town board uh, at a budget workshop the uh, recommended fiscal year 22 budget as well as the uh, five-year operating and capital plan. So tonight uh, is the formal presentation of both of those on the heels of our budget workshop. And before I run through um, the slide deck on these, I just want to make a few comments regarding the presentation tonight. Uh, so again, on April 21st, we had our budget workshop and the town board received a presentation uh, on the proposed budget, a balanced budget and five-year operating and capital plan. Uh, were presented and discussion about the impacts of growth on human resource needs, facilities, and the prioritization of infrastructure projects uh, took place at that meeting. A recommendation was made uh, that a public hearing be scheduled during the June 7th, 2021 town board meeting related to the proposed fiscal year 22 budget. In addition to receiving an abbreviated presentation of the recommended budget this evening, and by abbreviated, uh, perhaps time frame abbreviated. I'm going to try to run through the same material for the board and public's benefit. But um, uh, in addition to that, uh, the town board will be asked tonight to take action to schedule the budget public hearing for June 7th as required by North Carolina General Statute. Along with the pre-budget public hearing that the town traditionally holds during the month of February, uh, town staff developed and advertised a budget survey during the month of February to provide citizens an additional opportunity to share their budget priorities in advance of the budget process. Questions allowed citizens to rank in importance various town service areas and needs from the public's perspective. And that uh, survey was included in your agenda materials, uh, those, what those questions uh, were. Uh, these areas of importance included public safety, economic stability and growth, transportation and infrastructure, environmental sustainability, a vibrant downtown, and development services. <clears throat> the final task was requesting ideas on services, initiatives, and projects that would enhance our community and be considered uh, in the budget process. Uh, the town received 335 uh, survey responses, a much higher level of participation uh, than we had historically experienced during the pre-budget public hearing. Uh, of the responses, 75% self-identified as living in the town limits. 
Uh, this sample gives feedback from citizens on what is important from their perspective. The survey is an additional step towards increasing citizen participation during the budget process, which advances one of the town's strategic plan objectives, which is to provide exceptional customer service while enhancing citizen engagement. The input received from the budget survey has enhanced the community's involvement and information sharing process in collaboration with the development of the fiscal year 22 recommended budget. <clears throat> it should be noted that this budget makes significant investments in supporting transportation and infrastructure, construction improvements, rated extremely or very important by 75.7% of survey respondents. Public safety uh, uh, was 73% of survey respondents. Economic stability and growth, 55.4% rated it uh, extremely or very important. Development services were 52.7%, environmental sustainability 50.6%, and vibrant and accessible downtown 48.8%. Uh, these were also rated as extremely or very important by more than half of the survey respondents. Nearly half of the survey comments addressed the need for transportation improvements and infrastructure keeping the pace with development. Survey respondents commented on the need for sidewalk improvements, particularly to fill gaps in the pedestrian network between residential areas, retail corridors, and downtown. Other specific transportation improvements included widening existing portions of Judd Parkway, improvements to Purfoy Road, Holland Road intersection, and expanding the public transit options. Uh, roughly one-fifth of the comments addressed growth needs such as emphasizing the development of medical services, restaurants, and retail convenience to residents and focusing on redevelopment and recruitment to fill vacant retail spaces. Other comments addressed parks and recreation investments, economic development, downtown development, and other areas such as environmental sustainability. Additional comments addressed opportunities to expand recycling and yard debris collection and ensuring employee compensation, position, uh, employee compensation positions the town to recruit and retain talent. Management's recommendation is to schedule a budget public hearing on June 7th of this year as required by North Carolina statute. During the budget public hearing, the public will have the opportunity to offer input and feedback prior to budget adoption. Additionally, between May 3rd tonight and June 7th, the public will have the opportunity to review the budget on the town's website and may offer any input and or feedback that they wish to during that time frame. The proposed fiscal year 22 general fund budget totals $44,746,273. Absent a, uh, a few large uh, capital projects that we'll talk about. The recommended budget proposes a property tax rate of 39 and a half cents for every $100 in value, which is the same tax rate as we have currently. No tax rate increase is proposed. The proposed budget also includes no change in water and sewer base or volumetric rates for the enterprise fund. Overall, customer growth will generate a slight increase in revenue necessary to cover the cost of water supply, wastewater treatment, and debt service associated with public utility infrastructure. Additionally, the proposed budget recommends adding a $10 e-sports fee for residents and a $15 e-sports fee for non-residents. This being a program that we have just started after a pilot test run that was very successful. Other than that, the addition of the, other than this addition of this fee for a new program, no additional fee changes are proposed from the previous year fee schedule as amended. Adam, let me ask you this. How many participants did we have in that e-program, if you've got a ballpark idea? Well, there were different levels of uh, just partici to, just participation, total. somewhere yeah. between 50 and 100 participants for a pilot program. Uh -huh. And we intentionally capped it so that we could make sure that we could manage that program and do it effectively. But that, that was, it was extremely successful. It was. We had, we had never ventured into that realm before, and to, to have that well, and to be quite honest with you, Mayor, the participation registrations went very quickly. Yes. Yep. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. The five-year operating and capital plan are balanced, requiring the need for a three-cent tax increase in fiscal year 23, not a surprise, to offset the expense related to the construction, personnel, and outfitting of a fourth fire station. Additionally, the five-year plan identifies the need for a two-and-a-half-cent tax increase uh, in fiscal year 24, 
to offset the expense related to construction, personnel, and operations associated with a new community center in the northern port part of our town and senior center facility or active adult facility and a three cent potential tax rate increase. And I say potential because there's a lot of variables that could come into play between now and fiscal year 25 to offset the expense related to the construction, personnel, and outfitting of a fifth fire station. The plan includes the addition of personnel, capital equipment, and capital projects to match the pace of growth and is consistent with the direction set by the town board at the strategic planning retreat and the town's 2021 through 2025 strategic plan. The five-year plan also takes into consideration the recommendation from various town master plans and studies. Additionally, the five-year plan reflects the need for water and sewer volumetric rate increases in year three to offset the anticipated supplier increases and it anticipates adjustments to water and sewer rates phased in years two through four to cover the debt service required for additional water capacity for system users. No system development fee increases are assumed in the five-year plan. So I'm going to review these uh, slides and at the very end I'm going to remind the board that the recommended motion for you this evening is to schedule a public hearing on the Town of Fuquay Verena fiscal year 22 budget for June 7th of 2021. Any questions before I hop into it? No sir. Go All right ahead. If not then here we go. All right, just a quick reminder about the budget calendar and, and the process. Uh, budget packages went to department heads in early February. We had a bu budget pre-budget public hearing on February 16th. Budget requests were due to my office uh, first of March or near the first of March. Um, I presented the uh, uh, balanced budget and five-year plan to the town board at our budget workshop on April 21st. And tonight, May 3rd, is the formal presentation of the recommended budget to the board and the budget and CIP presentation. Uh, this will be posted online tomorrow morning on our town's website under the finance section of our, of our website and it will also be a feed off of our front page so that the public can at that point begin viewing our, our budget as is customary. Uh, again tonight if the town board uh, uh, so chooses uh, to approve the recommendation of management there will be a public hearing scheduled for June 7th and the board's consideration of adoption of the budget and the CIP on June 7th. And that will complete the budget process for this year. This is a 50,000 uh, foot look at the revenues that are assumed in the fiscal year 22 budget. A total of $50,146,000. Uh, um, part of this includes uh, some large capital projects that are assumed uh, in this budget, loan proceeds of $5.4 million, and we'll go over what those uh, reflect and represent as we move forward. 19 point, almost $6 million in ad valorem tax revenue, seven point almost $6 million in sales tax, and I won't review the rest of the numbers as they are on the screen. There is $4.3 million, however, I'll just draw your attention to, uh, of fund balance appropriated, and this is for projects uh, planned, and we'll go over uh, what those are as we move through this process. Any questions? Then moving forward. Uh, at a 50,000 foot look at our uh, general fund expenditures, we have this broken out by department. On the left hand uh, column, you'll see the department name. Center column, you'll see the department request. And the far right column, you'll see manager's recommended budget. So here we have governing body administration, communications, finance, engineering, public buildings, and central services. Moving forward, again, more departments in the general fund, information technology, human resources, police, fire. These are our two largest service departments within the general fund in terms of budget. Inspections, streets. Powell Bill, which is a general statute funded uh, street maintenance fund, yard debris, sanitation, planning and zoning, parks, recreation and cultural resources, and the Arts Center. And then finally, uh, economic development, downtown development, 
And then we have other categories broken out from these departments. New personnel that is recommended in the budget for fiscal year 22, capital equipment, capital projects, and debt. And we'll have slides that will go into the details of what all four of those categories are. The important part to uh, draw your attention to is when we started the budget process, we were about $2.3 million out of balance uh, through uh, discussion, conversation with uh, town department uh, directors and having a good understanding of what the town board's vision was coming out of our town board retreat uh, we amended to a balanced budget of fifty million one hundred forty six thousand two hundred and seventy three dollars again this is the high level look of what those dollars look like from a department request to a manager recommended budget so a big focus of our budget this year is advancing our strategic plan and I want to remind the board and any public that might be listening tonight, our vision statement. Fuquay Verena is a dynamic, inclusive, and caring community that provides exceptional service while offering economic opportunity, sense of place, and an unmatched quality of life. Our mission statement is that the town of Fuquay Verena will improve quality of life by developing and maintaining robust infrastructure, committing to environmental and fiscal sustainability, fostering economic and cultural opportunities, providing safety and security, and delivering exceptional municipal services, all while continuing to be a dash more. Fuquay Verena's core values as adopted by the town board in our most recent adoption of our strategic plan, 2021 through 2025, effective government and governance, fiscal strength, safety and security, economic vitality, preserving character and identity, and quality of life. So everything ties back to one or more of these six core values. So just some highlights to our budget to mention. The budget does include a 2% market adjustment for all town employees, a 3% performance compensation uh, uh, component. This means that employees who perform have the opportunity to uh, earn up to a 3% increase in compensation. Uh, these two are comparable to uh, our peer communities here in Wake County and in the region and in the marketplace for which we compete. Uh, 22 new full-time equivalent positions are included in this budget proposal, 20 from the out of the general fund, two out of the enterprise fund. There is a 10% increase in health insurance premiums. However, this is in the final stages of negotiation and we do believe that, um, that we are going to, uh, to do better as, as it relates to this category exactly how much I, I should have for you by June 7th. We think somewhere in the four to five percent range. Uh, proposes, uh, this budget proposes a tax rate of 39 and a half cents on the hundred, which is no change from the prior year. Some other budget assumptions. Tax base estimates are provided by the Wake County Revenue Department. New value as of January 1 of this year is 4.9 billion which is a tax base growth of 4.7% after exemptions and most appeals, 213 million in revenue from growth. The tax base, I'm sorry, 213 million from growth, excuse me. The tax base generated by the new construction is lagging the impact on core services. One cent generates approximately $494,000, almost a half a million dollars. This budget does assume a 4% increase in sales and use tax from the estimated fiscal year 21 collections. The town has not seen an absolute decline in sales tax revenue due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Therefore, our projections are based on current revenue patterns. The impact was mitigated by growth, home improvement, and e-commerce purchases. The first six months of this year, 3.56 million in sales tax has been received, which is 343,000 over the amount collected at the same time the previous fiscal year. So you can see from an economic standpoint, we're budgeting based on strong numbers that we're seeing. Additional budget assumptions, building permits have increased significantly over the last nine months, and this is generating significant workload in our inspections department. This budget assumes no growth in building permit revenues, but maintaining the same level uh, next fiscal year, which is a 66% increase over the 2021 budgeted building permit revenue. So we've seen some pretty substantial growth. We've talked about that almost every uh, month at town board meetings. We think that that growth pace is going to continue at least through next fiscal year 
and we're budgeting uh, in that manner. We don't see it going higher than our current pace, but we do think that based on our 2021 budget uh, uh, realizations, that planning for that same level in 22 is reasonable. This, especially with some of the recent announcements that have been made with future jobs uh, that will be brought to this area. Ref this budget reflects a $4.3 million general fund balance appropriation. This is consistent with our adopted five-year plan and our incentive agreements that have not been completed by the end of this fiscal year. And it reflects $440,204 of Powell Bill fund balance being appropriated, which includes an appropriation for a second street sweeper, adding a second one to our fleet, and a cash match for a lap grant pedestrian improvements projects. We use a lot of metrics as we plan for our budget. Some of these that we're gonna just go over are, are uh, extrapolated from a highlighted standpoint for purposes to discuss of how we, uh, we use metrics to help us. Uh, here are single family permits by fiscal year. And you can see in fiscal year 20, um, we had an all time high of 887 uh, single family permits for that fiscal year, uh, ending June 30th of 2020. Between July 1 of 2020 and current uh, March, through March of 2021, we have already surpassed what we did the previous fiscal year, 1,087. And I can tell you uh, that the number for April of 2021 is strong as well at 180. So we're continuing to see that strong trend. Uh, growth trends for building permit revenue by fiscal year. Uh, the blue bar represents budget. The red bar represents actual. You can see in fiscal year 20, uh, the actual exceeded by a good amount, uh, close to $400,000, more than we budgeted for building permit revenue. And it is anticipated that uh, we will end this fiscal year um, with an exceeding amount over our budgeted amount as well. Uh, other trends that we look at, single family permits by calendar year. Uh, this calendar year, if we stay on the current pace that we're on, uh, we will uh, exceed 2,000 single family permits, almost 21 to 2,200. Uh, you multiply that by two and a half people per household, uh, that's over 5,000 people just in one year uh, if everyone occupies those homes that are being built here. Certificates of occupancy issued. Uh, we're anticipating close to uh, 1,200 certificates of occupancy. Those lag behind the permitting because there's usually six to nine months of time lag to build a home. So the permit's issued, and then six to nine months later, the certificate of occupancy is issued so somebody can occupy the house. Inspections performed. Uh, we did not really uh, include a, uh, uh, an estimation uh, for the end of this year, uh, but it would not be unreasonable for us to exceed 35,000 inspections during the course of this calendar year. All right, so some personnel recommendations in the fiscal year budget. 22, again, new full-time equivalent positions, 20 out of the general fund, two out of the enterprise fund. Full-time equivalent positions are in the police department, fire department, inspections, human resources, finance, public works, information technology, and parks, recreation, and cultural resources, a total of 20. And these are directly attributed to growth, public safety priorities, and addressing the demand that consistent growth has put on core services. Strategic investments in new personnel are needed to advance objectives and initiatives identified within the core values of the strategic plan, particularly in the areas of safety and security, effective government and governance, and fiscal strength. And again, full-time equivalents in the public utilities department are two, and these are to provide support in customer service billing due to customer growth and an assistant public utilities director to plan for the future. So our personnel recommendations, there were 23 requested by departments, 22 recommended at this time by management, uh, the difference being in the public utilities department. Uh, going into a little bit more detail on the personnel recommendations for police officers, 
We have a human resources analyst, parks maintenance worker, recreation superintendent, budget analyst, system administrator in the IT department, three firefighters, transportation engineer and planner, building inspector, a plans examiner in the inspections department, debris collector, a street sweeper operator, sanitation equipment operator, sanitation worker, two, and the equipment operator makes the third that would allow us to put a new crew into service, customer service representative in the enterprise fund and an assistant public utilities director. The personnel recommendations themselves amount to a little over $1.6 million. And this includes benefits and it does. Uh, everything that goes with someone yes, sir. being hired. It's not just salary. No, it's not just salary. Salary benefits, if their position requires computer technology, work vehicle, uh, all of that's included in these numbers. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Uh, currently, we have 283 funded positions. If the town board were to approve the recommendation of 22 new positions, it would take our organization to 305 full-time equivalent employees. How do you, where do you get your four on administration? Uh, you have uh, the town manager, the two assistant town managers, and, and the executive assistant to the town manager. Okay. And then we got Faithful Rose, who is works coordinating the governing board. Correct. All right, moving forward. Uh, just to look at some benchmarks for comparison purposes uh, with our public safety departments, with police, uh, we're using our 2019 uh, census population estimate, as are we using the same metric for the other municipalities that we benchmarked to. And here you can see in fiscal year 21, we have 55 sworn positions, an officer to population ratio of right at 1.8, uh, two being sort of the industry mark to shoot for. Uh, with these uh, new positions, four of them, it would take us to 59, and we move our metric up by uh, one tenth of a percent at 1.9. And you can see how that would compare to our peers um, based on what we understand their requests are as well. So you can but see how we spring, for example. We've been steady, steadily bringing that number we up, have. up toward the two. That's correct. Over the last several years, and, and that, that's a good, good thing. Now, one of the things we talked about, obviously, uh, at our budget workshop is when we get our 2020 census numbers, um, I would anticipate that our population would be somewhere north of 30,324, and if that's the case, that ratio goes back down, but we've got a plan to consistently begin, you know, continue to chip away at it. Uh, for our fire personnel comparison purposes, uh, here we look at a number of different metrics, uh, population, coverage ratio, responses. We have 54 sworn positions in our fire department. And, and we look at a population of not just what's in the city limits of Fuquay Verena, but for fire, this includes the protected residents within the fire tax district. 54, and you can see how we compare to some of our peers, and we do have uh, some, one of the larger response coverage areas in the county. With the 57, the three new positions, it does carry our population ratio to one, which is about at the industry standard and it helps to improve our coverage and response ratio as well. Part of what you do with the fire, you're, you're really working toward keeping everybody's insurance rate as low as possible. That's true. And um, as we expand our fire department, which they have a number, number two rating now, um, there's a chance that we could move up to a, a number one rating, but it would be uh, very, we'd have to work very hard to get there. And, uh, but I've seen it change from probably a nine, maybe eight, nine, uh, to a number two. We have one of the best fire departments um, in the state, and we have one of the best ratings um, in the state, and it goes goes into response times. Um, 
but with this new new fire station coming online it will actually help benefit us in a huge way it will there yes sir okay so moving past personnel was there any other questions about personnel before we get into capital equipment if not moving into capital equipment these are all items in the proposed budget that are over five thousand dollars and so I'll just run through these real quick. They, they encompass up to a little over $1.1 million in total. Um, there are some in, uh, capital investments in the IT department, a replacement uh, work order van, storage server replacement, a staff vehicle in the engineering department, a replacement vehicle in the planning department. We have vehicle replacements in the police department, new position vehicles, take home vehicle, SRT vehicle and van. In Public Works, the new street sweeper, which I mentioned earlier, POW bill funds will pay for this vehicle. Parks and Recreation includes a treadmill for our workout room at the community center, as well as a tractor um, and Ford F-250 work truck. I shouldn't say Ford, should we, that's what we're specking out, but it could be any work truck. Uh, fire is a Battalion 1 replacement. Um, the Arts Center, we're going to propose a purchase of the, a digital snake and morally flooring, and in the inspections department, a new position vehicle. So these are all tied back to growth and in many ways, new personnel. Is that van that the tech information technology has, is that that old one we've had for, how old is that thing? Uh, I don't know the exact age, but it is, uh, it's, it's, we've, we've gotten our money we've out of it. We've gotten our money out <laughs> That's of it. That's right. right. I'm surprised it still works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as is the IT department there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and then in addition to new personnel and capital equipment, there's also capital projects and special projects included in this budget recommendation. And so they include pedestrian projects uh, at a POW bill, uh, the community center gym floor resurfacing, rec unit fees are proposed to be used to pay for those improvements, Action Park Tennis Court Lighting System, Rec Unit Fees, the Carol Howard Johnson Environmental Education Park Trail Improvements, as well as the bridge replacement, a, a bridge replacement at the, at the uh, Carol Howard Park. Hilltop Needmoor Town Park and Preserve Master Plan, there are funds in here with Rec Unit Fees to kick off the master planning process for that park. Uh, Action Park Dugouts and Scoreboard uh, proposed for Rec Unit Fees, Community Center North and Senior Center Design, Rec Unit Fees, Fire Station Number 4 Construction. Uh, this is a loan of $5.4 million, uh, but that $5.4 million is $5 million for Fire Station Number 4 Construction and $400,000 for land acquisition for Fire Station Number 5 and 6. Fire Station Number 1 Exterior Painting, Fire Station Number 2 Interior Painting and Parking Lot Resealing, commercial retail project infrastructure support, and a market analysis study. In addition, this proposed budget includes uh, a part of our economic development incentive agreement with the Raleigh Street Mixed Use Project, uh, economic development incentive for manufacturing expansion, Anger Road parking lot improvement, crosswalk additions and improvements in various parts of our community, downtown master plan, this is the uh, second part of funding for the, the downtown master plan. The North Industry Landscaping Project, the Aviator uh, Economic Development Incentive Project, Police Department Roof Replacement, Police Department Windows, the addition of office space uh, to help accommodate these new personnel that are being recommended in the budget, and an update to our form-based code, develop, a development code. All of these combined uh, amount to just under $12 million. Uh, funding, it is worth noting that funding of $650,000 was not included in this budget plan for the Depot Street uh, conversion as further refinement is needed regarding scope, purpose, and function. But that is something we are going to continue to, to focus on and identify opportunities to, uh, to advance that project. I think it's a good it's a good project and it needs our our full attention. Yes, sir. Any other questions about the capital and special projects 
that are included in the fiscal year 22 budget? I, I don't have any. I, I think you would um, done a good job with them, man. Uh, I, I believe that they touch on either uh, need that we've identified as a priority or uh, strategic plan and vision that we prioritized. Uh, just as a reminder about debt service, existing debt service, this schedule here shows for the next five years of debt service for the town. Uh, for fiscal year 22, next year we'll have uh, 3.5, almost 3.6 million dollars of debt service in the general fund. Two point, almost two million of it being principal, and 1.4 million of it being interest. And this goes towards paying off debt on the community community center renovation project, the 2019 refunding bonds, 2012 bonds, uh, public service center, the 2018 geo bonds, and the 2018 limited obligation bonds, those being for our government facilities projects. Uh, you will see if you look on the far right column of this chart or this table, the first time any of the existing debt is paid off is the last payment of the community center renovation project 2025-26 will free up right at $105,000 of debt capacity. Any questions about our current existing debt schedule? When we get into the five-year plan, we'll talk a little bit more about how that debt schedule changes. The debt service fund, again, a reminder, this is a fund separate from our general fund balance as it stands on our books. The debt service fund balance as of June 30th of 2020 was $1,247,840. Debt service for 2021-2022, next fiscal year. Again, we just went over that, 3.5, almost $3.6 million dollars of which 471,000 of those dollars is paid for by rec unit fees for the Fleming Loop Park debt service and the community center debt service. $295,000 from the vehicle tax fee will also be transferred to the debt, into the debt service fund balance where the town board has previously stated it should be reserved uh, for future transportation investments and priorities. Again, 471,000 and change is being transferred from rec unit fees to the debt service fund for the Fleming Loop Park improvements and the community center renovation debt payments. $1,088,450 is being transferred from rec unit fees to the general fund to offset proposed recreation enhancement projects. Those we re recently just uh, went over on a previous table. Adam, approximately how much do we have going into the fund? We know what we're taking out here about what you got going Yeah, we'll get to a chart uh, in, in just a moment for okay. all of our funds that okay. will show that. Um, I think and when we get to the five-year plan, we have those, okay. those charts. Okay. I'll circle to that in a moment. Uh, again, just a reminder to my comments made earlier, uh, we do have a proposed new fee to our fee schedule. Other than this, no changes are being recommended, and this is to add the eSports program fee, $10 for residents, $15 for non-residents. You know, the, the other thing that I think about that particular program, uh, it, it, Jonathan, it took place during the time of COVID. That's correct. And it was extremely well received. I, I heard several great, great comments about it. Thank you. So any questions about the fiscal year 22 general fund operating budget? I'm going to transition in a quick moment to fiscal year 22 enterprise fund operating budget. But before we do that, any questions about general fund? Sounds like we're good. Okay, then moving forward, this is the fiscal year 22 enterprise fund operating budget. Again, a 50,000 foot look at what revenues reflect uh, here we have a 23, almost $24 million operating budget, 7 million of it, or just a little more than 7 million of it is, is revenue generated by water sales. Uh, right at 7.4 million of it is revenue generated by sewer treatment. Uh, there's interest earnings, penalties, leases, permits, and, and rate increases. Again, no rate increases for this year, but those columns or line items reflect $777,750 in revenue assumptions. We have a reserves appropriation of two point almost nine million dollars <coughs> for various projects or maintenance, which we'll talk about in a moment, projects really. And then we have a transfer from system development fees 
of 5,775,000 that ties back to uh, related projects as well. We'll go over that in just a moment. So our revenue picture here, we're looking at 23, almost $24 million in revenue coming in. Our budget assumptions here are that there are no changes in water and sewer rates from the previous year. We are assuming uh, 1,100 new residential units. This is building permits and apartment units um, for system development fees. 1,000 new homes for water and sewer sales. 20 new apartment uh, dwelling units, buildings. Um, and each one of the, actually buildings, I should say, and each building has dwelling units within it and then 50 new irrigation taps for water sales. Other budget assumptions include average daily water, <coughs> water demand increasing to 2.82 million gallons a day, average daily wastewater treated at the North Harnett Regional Wastewater Treatment Plant will increase from one, to 1 1.4, from 1.43 million gallons a day to 1.1, 1.55, excuse me, million gallons a day. Harnett County is not proposing any rate increases this year. Johnston County and the city of Raleigh are proposing a 1% to 3% rate increase. However, Raleigh's rate structure last year in 2020 reduced per gallon cost from $4.79 per thousand gallons to $2.92 per thousand gallons. So the increases that are proposed this year are absorbed in our current rates, which is nice. Uh, just as a reminder, no change in fees are being proposed from the previous year. Our water uh, fees <coughs> are based on meter size, and so we have a base rate for water and sewer based on meter size, and then we have the variable rate. For water, it's $5.17 uh, $5 per thousand gallons. For sewer, it's $6.08 per thousand gallons, and then we have an out-of-town rate that is essentially double. Uh, for any water customer that's not in the town limits of the town but receives our service. So our expenditures at a 50,000 foot look, what do the expenditure numbers, assumptions look like that balance to the revenue? 4.4 million of that is related to water operations. 4.3 million is to sewer treatment operations. Utility billing and collections amounts to just over half a million dollars. Then we have debt service and major maintenance projects. Those combined are at $4.4 million. And then a transfer to the enterprise capital projects and water and sewer projects. So we've got a pretty hefty transfer out of uh, uh, enterprise um, operations to capital projects and water and sewer projects to help pay for advancing some of the projects that we've identified as priorities. And here we do have a balanced budget of $23,892,606. So some assumptions on the expenditure side, fiscal year 22 budget was developed with a great emphasis on preparing for the significant capital expenditures required in the five-year plan to address long-term water capacity needs. Operational line items are assumed to increase three to 5% per year. Sanford's water supply cost funding options and the impact on rates will be further studied in the next fiscal year to inform a phased in fee change to support the water supply debt service and operational costs. So this is sort of a little bit, a bit of a notation here to say we're going to be further refining what the cost estimates are to uh, uh, move forward with our Sanford partnership, the Fuquay Verena Sanford Water Partnership, and in doing so, we will be uh, in, in the coming years recommending a phased in fee change to help support that future debt service. And then finally, an assumption that is built into this budget is to maintain reserves to support this top priority. Capital improvement projects are limited uh, to needed projects and limited other projects will be evaluated if there is a compelling business case or return on investment to partner with private development for a development triggered need. And so where previously we had identified a number of projects that the town was going to take the lead on and go ahead and put infrastructure in the ground, um, here what we're saying is we may need to rethink that strategy, put money to the side for those improvements, but only make those improvements if we know that there's actually a real return on investment to be yielded by those improvements. And so again, personnel and the enterprise fund operations budget 
includes those two positions, an assistant public utilities director and a billing customer service representative, 70% paid for out of uh, the um, water and sewer enterprise fund, the other 30% paid for out of the general fund finance department budget. So we're splitting those, those costs up. And again, these are not just salary, these are, are numbers reflect salary benefits, any equipment that would need be needed for that position. Our enterprise fund does have notable water and sewer capital equipment and maintenance projects here. These are projects over or equipment over 5,000 in value, a new folding machine for our building department, a safety inspector truck, roadway steel plates, an easement tractor for maintaining easements, jetter nozzles, replacement utility bed trucks for our sewer department. We're actually saving about $80,000 here because we're not replacing um, uh, the, uh, we're replacing the cab and chassis, but not the utility beds themselves. We're repurposing those and a new dump truck uh, for the sewer operations department. $332,000 in capital equipment. Operations projects, we do have some miscellaneous water maintenance project funding in place, $112,000, uh, about $225,000 to continue combating inflow and infiltration minimization, and then miscellaneous uh, uh, tears and breaks and lines and things of that nature to pump damage, things that happen just naturally through the course of a fiscal year. We've got funds set aside to uh, address those issues as well. $742,000 for operations projects. Then beyond capital equipment and maintenance, we have capital projects. And here, uh, the fiscal year 22 budget does account for uh, design for plant expansion and conveyance. This is not the total cost of design. This is a phased in approach, $3 million for fiscal year 22. We'll talk more when we get to the five-year plan about the other $4 million. Kennebec Road water line, uh, the Raleigh water supply agreement, $2 million there. The water line replacements for fund, out of fund 60, that's a $1 million for water line replacements. And then the third and final phase of our automated metering uh, technology, uh, phase three at 251,000. Seven point, almost $5 million for proposed water capital projects. And then on the sewer side, uh, the Middle Creek pump station upgrade, the Mills Branch pump station upgrade, uh, and then uh, sewer parallel line on US Highway 401 uh, of $1.2 million. And this is tying uh, or adding sewer capacity from right at sort of the Wake Tech Interstate 540 area all the way back to these two pump stations that we'll be upgrading. This is to accommodate growth in the northern sector of our community. $2.7 million. So again, $10.194 million of proposed capital projects in water and sewer. And there's a big demand up in that it yeah, is, and there will be a bigger one once 540. You got to think about 540 comes online. That's going to give a pretty clear shot over to the RTP area where Apple just announced that they're making a huge investment. So I anticipate that uh, uh, there will be some some strong look at our community from a residential development standpoint and commercial retail standpoint off that 540 interchange. You know, you're already seeing um, a lot of a lot of activity. I, I think about. <clears throat> And the loaves that's coming to Holly Springs, uh, it's it's right there on our line too. So it's right. like coming to Fuqua Verena, and you also we have the Costco that's coming up in that 540 that 10 -10 area, area. That's right. That is actually on the Garner side, but it's right there next to Fuqua Verena. Well, if you I don't know if any of you have driven up near the strawberry farm there at uh, Lake Wheeler Road and 1010, but uh, Legacy Farm, a new subdivision is being built there. Yeah. Uh, if you've seen their new uh, sign into their neighborhood, uh, if you haven't, go take a look at it. But um, uh, they partnered with us to put a welcome to Fuqua Verena sign. And so it's very evident it that good. in the 1010 area that where Fuqua Verena begins. I drive that route often going to Raleigh for some different appointments and I saw them as they were building that sign and um, and just saw it the other day finish where it has our town portion on it and that, that was a good plan. Looks good job. Sharp. Well I can't take all the credit for that I have to give uh, Pam Davison our 
our planning director and uh, Susan Weiss, our communications director, they worked closely with those uh, development partners to, to make that happen, and it did turn out pretty nice. Well, Pam, Susan, thank you all. That lo good it looks good. Good job. It makes a difference. Everything makes a difference. All right, continuing forward then, uh, just to spend a little time talking about the Sanford Water Treatment <laughs> Expansion Project, <clears throat> a preliminary engineering report, a PER, for the expansion of the City of Sanford Water Treatment Plant is scheduled to be completed by really any time now, uh, in, in the April 1st of uh, May. We're expecting that in hand, and we look forward to seeing that. A PER for the conveyance system is scheduled to be completed by November of this year, but with preliminary cost data to us by July. So by summer we're going to have a much clearer picture of what this project is going to look like from a cost perspective from a couple of different uh, uh, paths uh, the path of, of uh, limited partnership in this project and the path of uh, more partnership in this project and so there there could be a wide span of what uh, the, the estimated cost would be but it'll help us from a standpoint of planning for future debt service and planning for rates the interbasin transfer certificate petition is scheduled to be submitted to the North Carolina Environmental Commission February of next year with the expectation of a record of decision and finding of fact being issued in the summer of 2023. So February of 22 it gets submitted and then a year and a half later we expect to have a decision on our interbasin transfer certificate. Uh, it is assumed that Fuquay Verena's costs for surveying, design, permitting, easement acquisition, and other soft costs are estimated at $7 million over the next three fiscal years. Fuquay Verena's construction costs are estimated at $70 million, with an assumed debt service starting in 2023-2024 based on a 20-year loan with a 3.5% interest rate if no other partners participate. Again, we'll know more after the PERs come in for both the conveyance system and the plant expansion, but these are the assumptions that we're making at the moment. Fuquay Verena's actual construction costs will depend on participants in the plant expansion and the conveyance system and the economic factors such as contractor availability and material costs at the time of bidding. If you'll recall when we did the expansion of the Terrible Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant, we hit that at very good timing. Uh, construction costs were not at their peak and uh, contractors in the area had their pencils sharpened and, and were hungry for work and we got a really good bid from Crowder Construction and as we know they did a fantastic job they came in uh, under budget and uh, under schedule or ahead of schedule I ahead should schedule, say yeah. that's right uh, our enterprise fund debt schedule this is current debt as a reminder so in fiscal year 22 we'll have about 3.6 million dollars in debt to pay off 2.2 of that will be principal and 1.4 interest, and they accompany or encompass the 2010 bonds, the North Carolina Devi Department of Environmental and Natural Resources sewer loan for the Hernet County line, the 2013 installment purchase con or debt for water lines, the public service center, the other half of the public service center, and the Terrible Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant. And you can see none of this debt is paid off until the very first uh, bit of it is paid off in 2013, I'm sorry, in 2028 with the 2013 installment water line uh, debt, free up about $106,000. Are there any questions about the Water and Sewer Enterprise Fund operating budget for fiscal year 22? In a moment, I'll, trans uh, I'll uh, transition into the five-year plan for both the general fund and the, and the enterprise fund. I just have a couple like general comments, but I'm holding mine to the very end of the presentation. Okay. Any other questions about the operating fund for fiscal year 22? I think we're good. All right. Then Scott, I think I'll need you to tee up the five-year plan if you can. All right. So here we have the general fund five-year plan for fiscal year 22 through 26. This is capital equipment, capital projects, and personnel primarily, which will be highlighted but it will give you the big big picture of all revenues and expenditures. The purpose of a five-year plan is to align projected revenues and expenditures for the forecasted period, the five-year period, identify the needs of the town for the planning period, stagger projects to align with projected revenue, identify long-range budget shortfalls and attempt to avert them 
identify funding for major projects or capital, and review this annually and modify based on economic climate and priorities. Why do we do a five-year plan? Well, one, our bond rating agencies look for it. They want to know that we have a plan, how we can balance our needs and prioritization and do so in a way that is fiscally sound. And we also do it to actually have a plan, have a good structure for how we're going to invest in our future needs. So the general fund here, looking over the next five years, the first column uh, being the title of the line items, second column, three, uh, uh, last column being the years that we're talking about. The first year column, 2022, that is the year that we just went over for next fiscal year, and then each one, each subsequent one. Kind of the highlights here to point out to you are the, the uh, just under the top line item of Avalorum taxes, the next four reflect either tax, uh, potential tax rate increases or tax generated by large um, projects, in this case, the commercial retail project, uh, Gold Leaf uh, Crossing that we expect to be kicking off here pretty soon. And so you'll see in year two, when I refer to year two, I'm talking about fiscal year 2023, you'll see this is where we anticipate uh, some tax uh, rate increase need, being needed to offset the capital uh, for construction, uh, personnel, and operating expenses for fire station number four. And you'll see some projected es <laughs> estimated, small amount of estimated tax revenue from the commercial retail project. Uh, in 2024, year three, you'll see that uh, the, the revenue that it will be generated by that tax increase the year prior for fire station number four. And then you'll also see revenue being generated for a two and a half cent tax rate increase for the uh, need of debt service and personnel and operations for the Community Center North Senior Center project, $1.3 million, and some additional tax revenue being generated by the commercial retail project as it is being phased in and developed. And year four, fiscal year 25, here you have the revenue that was generated in fiscal year two, in year two for fire station number four, you also have the revenue that was generated uh, by a tax rate increase in year three for the Community Center North Senior Center, and now you, you begin to see new tax revenue being generated for a tax rate increase, potentially up to three cents, for fire station number five. And then again, more revenue being generated by the commercial retail project. That will continue to grow as that project begins to be phased in over the next uh, many years. Uh, the point to make here is, and I want to reemphasize this, we talked a lot about this at our budget workshop. These are what we uh, assume the tax rate will need to be in order to accommodate the debt service personnel and operations for these larger projects, Fire Station 4, Community Center North, Senior Center, Fire Station number 5. Uh, growth could impact that assumption. If we can continue to see substantial growth, this five-year plan is a bit conservative with our revenue assumptions, and so if, if our growth exceeds our assumptions, then uh, those tax rate increases may not need to be as large. They can potentially be smaller. Additionally, uh, in this, during this five-year period, we will have another, ta uh, another property tax reevaluation. That, too, can play a significant role in what our future uh, tax rate may look like. And so I don't know that I would necessarily get too uh, hung up at this point on three cents here, two and a half cents here, three cents here. It could be as much as that, but we've seen some growth trends here recently that would tell us that that might be, uh, uh, that Mo might not Most come likely it's going to be less. I think so. That would be my assumption, but we, we don't want to necessarily assume that too early. And then you can see how revenue is generated and grows over the course of the five years in these other departments. I guess going down to the, near the end uh, that I would draw your attention to, uh, loans and bonds, uh, again, 5.4 million in year one. Uh, year two, fiscal year 23, this accounts for um, uh, the loan or bonds for the Community Center North Senior Center Project. It also accounts for uh, the third and final contribution to the commercial retail uh, economic Development Incentive Project. We'll go into more detail about that as we move forward in this presentation. And then year three, uh, that's $6.3 million. 
that accounts for uh, some of the, the debt service associated with fire station number five. Um, you also will see, uh, again, that uh, general fund balance um, uh, is planned for in year one and two. We'll go into the details of what, that are, what those are, but no fund balance is proposed to be appropriated in year four, five, and six. To the mayor's question earlier about what comes in and what goes out of those fund balances, we'll get to that in just a moment in our presentation. To the general fund revenue assumptions, we're assuming that tax base growth is projected at 20, $225 million annually for years two through three and $220 million in years four through five. And I have to say that these are conservative numbers compared to what we think we're going to be seeing based on our current um, trends in, in development. Um, it would not be shocking if we saw somewhere north of 250 to 300 million in year one, fiscal year 22. But again, we don't want to make uh, over assumptions because you know anything could happen that would could change that. Uh, the tax rate adjustment again of three cents is recommended in year two to offset the debt service and operating expenses for fire station number four. An additional tax rate adjustment of two and a half cents is recommended in year three to offset debt service and operating expenses for the community center north senior center. A property tax rate adjustment of three cents is implemented in year four to offset debt service and operating expenses for fire station number five. And again, there is additional commercial and retail value that is added uh, to revenue in years two through five. The revenue assumptions continue that growth of 2% in years two through four for other taxes and unrestricted intergovernmental revenues, uh, growth of 4% in years two through five for sales and use tax and permits and fees. We're seeing numbers greater than 4%. Uh, trends greater than 4% in those, those line items right now. So while we believe that those are uh, reasonable, uh, they may be a little more on the conservative side compared to what we will actually see. Expected cost share uh, increase from Wake County in proportion to the increased operations and debt service for fire stations in years two and four. There's a growth assumption of 5% in years two through five for sales and services and an additional increase in year two associated with an expected rate increase for refuse or garbage fees. We haven't gone up on garbage fees in close to 15 years, and, um, but the cost of service is going up, and so uh, that is something we're gonna have to study and take a look at. Loans are included in the same year the project costs that are in the same year that the project costs are expected to be incurred, and transfers to and from the various reserves as projects are eligible for reserve funding are also included. Uh, just to give com some comparison on Wake County tax rates uh, for fiscal year 2021, uh, you'll see uh, in blue our, our peers and our neighbors and in green is Fuquay Verena and we're one of the five uh, lowest tax rates in Wake County. The average single family uh, tax bill um, for an average price home in Fuquay Verena is 1061 and you can see that's one of the lower tier uh, tax bills for average families in the Wake County as well. The Wake County medium single family tax bill uh, uh, here 1034 on the lower end as well compared to our peers. A little delay there. Okay, so our general fund expenditures. Here again, we have it broken out by department on the left-hand column and then years one through five. Remember fiscal year 22, year one, we already went over those. Um, the thing to point out here is uh, these uh, uh, line items that are kind of in the purplish blue color, debt, uh, ladder truck, so our existing debt, that you'll see in the first line there. It starts at 3.1 million, goes all the way down to 2.7 million in year five. So we're paying existing debt down, but then you'll see in the line items below, we're taking on new debt over the course of this five year period as well. Uh, the ladder truck debt service, one and a half million dollars. That debt service will come on in year two. That's about 297,000 level principal uh, all the way uh, across for the, for the, the term of that, that loan. New debt service for fire station number four begins in year two. 
Uh, new debt service for fire station number five begins in year four. Debt service for two fire engines begin in year four. And then the community center senior center debt begins in year three. And you can see how those impact uh, the budget throughout the five year plan. And then we have our same assumptions as what we talked about for fiscal year 22 operating budget. We have new personnel, capital equipment, capital projects. And we'll go over those. The big thing to point out here is that at the very bottom line, you'll see balanced budget, balanced five year plan. Uh, we do that with surpluses and deficits over the course of those five years. At the end of five years, we have a surplus, and I'll show you what those look like in a moment. So again, general fund expenditure assumptions, new debt for a ladder truck, fire station four, community center north, senior center, uh, fire station number five, and a portion of the shared fire station number six, and two engines take effect in those various years that we just talked about. $330,000 are transferred from debt reserve fund balance in year two. This is a deficit. So uh, in year two, we're transferring from debt reserve fund balance into the general fund to offset that deficit of $330,000. 104,000 in year uh, three is a surplus. That'll go back into the debt reserve fund. 147,000 in year four is a deficit. So that money will come out of the debt reserve fund and back into the general fund to help balance the budget in year four. And then in year five, we're projecting an $832,000 uh, surplus that'll go out of the general fund and into the debt reserve fund balance, uh, budgeted use of the fund balance. So the overall, over the course of the five year period, we actually don't have a balanced five-year plan. We actually have a five-year plan that is to the good by $459,000 in surplus over that five-year period. All right, so these, uh, the plan in terms of summary for capital equipment, capital projects, and personnel, you can see year one, those three items encompass $14.5 million. In year two, they move up to $19 million. Some of that has to do with staffing of fire station number four. In year three, they go down to $9.5 million combined. In year four, $6.3 million. And in year five, a almost $0.1 million. Equipment detailed by year, so this is capital equipment. Um, this table here shows uh, how capital equipment is being funded by our various departments over the course of those five years. And when you look at it, drilling down into it, these next five slides actually show you what specific capital equipment is being proposed to be purchased. I won't go over year one because we spent some time doing that just a few moments ago. Uh, year two, some of the highlights here again are new position or replacement vehicles in various departments. In the public works department, we've got a bucket truck replacement, a dump truck replacement, a new garbage uh, truck, that will be paid for out of reserve funds that we have set aside for that, and a leaf vac truck replacement in, in year two, a parks and recreation, various equipment, as well as mowers, a, a fire department has a vehicle replacement, some sound equipment that will allow us to take programming outside of the art center, but on the art center campus uh, in year two, and in our IT department, uh, a phased approach uh, of investment into our document scanning project an additional server node, and a software program, Tyler Ready Forms, that will provide assistance to our finance department and our various departments that work with our finance department. Total equipment, $1.5 million in year two. Any questions about year two equipment? Pretty Let me straightforward. Ask you this, Adam. Yes, sir. We got a dump truck listed at 200000 Yes, sir. Is that, I mean, is that something we need? Yeah, it wouldn't be on the list if we didn't need it. Yes, sir. But that's a big dump truck. It is a big trunk, dump truck. Okay, what do we use the dump truck for? Well, we may use it for hauling away uh, uh, right of way um, uh, debris related to improvement projects like curb and and uh, gutter replacements, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. We're like hauling cement and cement hard, hard, things of that nature. Hard, hard stuff. Exactly. Now the the big equipment that we use to get our um, uh, yard debris. That's right, knuckle booms. Th that is, that, that runs more than this, doesn't it? That's right. Knuckle booms are, they're, they're at full capacity, running 
picking up yard debris weekly throughout town. But they're more expensive than a dump truck. They are, yes, sir. Another hundred they're, thousand. Mechanically, they're a much different vehicle. Yeah, okay. All right, you got me. Any other questions about year two? Then year three, capital equipment. Uh, again, we have replacement and new vehicles, staffing vehicles, uh, lighting equipment, uh, police vehicles, uh, radios, portable and mobile, uh, cargo van for the public buildings department, replacing their work van, uh, mowers and work trucks and tractors for parks and recreation for maintenance of our, uh, of our park system. Uh, in the fire department, we've got mobile data terminals in our vehicles, uh, self-contained breathing apparatuses, uh, extrication equipment, a new engine for fire station number five. This accounts for a loan and an engine one replacement uh, uh, for fire station for one of our fire stations. Uh, and then uh, information technology, desktop replacement, a portion of our desktops within our system. This is a phased approach, an additional server node. And then the public works department, again, vehicle replacements, tractor, mowers, um, and then a pickup replacement and sanitation and then our pack rat mechanism and sanitation. Two point, almost $4 million in year three. If no questions, year four, again, more replacement and new vehicles in various departments. And again, we're, re we're investing in uh, another phase of desktop and laptop replacements in our, in our organization as is planned, uh, upgrading our virtualization servers, um, radio replacements, uh, a new engine uh, for fire station for number five, engine number five, parks and recreation, skid steer, heavy duty pickup, uh, mowers, and then in public works, um, vehicle replacement, street sweeper. This could either be a third to our fleet or a replacement sweeper. We'll have to evaluate that at that time. Snow plow, rear flail mowers, two of them, uh, another garbage packer, and a replacement garbage truck, and then a leaf vac replacement, and a salt and sand spreader. Some of our equipment here, uh, leaf facts are exceeding 10 years in age. You know, one of the things that people don't necessarily realize when you do a new fire station, um, <clears throat> the staffing is 24 hours a day. Correct. Uh, so you can't just say, okay, we're going to get, you know. Can't put a building without the people to, to operate that's, it. That's right, to operate it. And, uh, they do a great job, but it's a 24 hour a day uh, process. It's much like a hospital uh, because these are safety people and uh, helping all of our community. Okay, and then uh, finally year five, uh, again, more new and replacement vehicles in various departments, continuing investing in our desktop and laptop replacement phased approach and additional server node. Uh, more radio replacement, uh, vehicle replacement in the planning department, work truck and parks and recreation, a tractor, bunker rake and gator, um, thermal imaging camera replacements, two of those in our fire department, a replacement of engine number four, new deputy fire marshal vehicle, uh, salt and sand spreader in public works, and pottery equipment, expanding our programming in the art center. You know, you talked, uh uh, what was it? A snake? We had digital a, snake. A That's digital in snake. One. We had one of those. Now we got a gator. We've had rats, gators, had a, snakes. That's right. A rats, something. <laughs> oh, oh my. <clears throat> That's right. Any other questions of capital equipment? If not, then we'll talk about capital projects. These are detailed by year, very similar similarly. So I won't go over year one because we spent time doing that during the operating budget presentation. So year two, fiscal year 23, again, continued investment in pedestrian projects. Either, these are either coming from our master plan or other, and we did hear during our survey responses that people want more sidewalk connectivity, linking uh, them to retail, linking them to downtown, linking them to schools, filling in gaps. So we're making that investment with this five-year plan. Uh, Action Park tennis court replacement, uh, South Park uh, track resurfacing and Falcon Park dugout and score tower. These things are proposed to be funded by rec unit fees. And then our commercial, the, uh, the third in, uh, investment or installment into our commercial retail project infrastructure support, the community center north senior center construction. This is proposed or estimated at this time at $11.5 million. We'll know more as refinement of those plans comes along. 
This will be part of a conversation that we'll have later on in tonight's agenda re regarding our GEO bond. Uh, the community center roof replacement, town hall window replacement, replacing some windows here at this town hall facility, transportation plan update, station number two, fire station number two, exterior painting and interior painting, fire station number one, exhaust system upgrade and interior paint, fire, system, uh, fire station number five, design and a uh, investment into storm system maintenance. You know, you, you talk about uh, sidewalks. Uh, we've done a remarkable job over the last eight or 10 years um, with sidewalks, getting them to go to downtown mm -hmm. and connecting Fleming Loop Park. And as we open up Judd Parkway, a lot of connectivity um, there this week um, you will see a tremendous amount of sidewalks you know out in that in that area that's right um, which I would encourage everyone to um, you know to enjoy um, that if you enjoy getting out and walking these will be very nice sidewalk facility I don't know how many I, get back to you on that. I don't yeah, have we don't know exact question. mileage of sidewalks, but we we have added. Um, Maybe Jim can find that answer out before we get into the ask Matt. Yeah, we have added a tremendous amount of sidewalks, um, you know, in Fuqua Arena over the last several years, and I'm very very proud of this board and and that what we have been able to accomplish. Moving forward in year three. Capital projects, here we got continued investment in pedestrian projects. Uh, fire station number five, loan for construction. Fire station number one, parking lot ceiling. Fire station number two, exhaust system upgrade and interior paint. Fire station number one was done the year prior, proposed in the year prior. Land development ordinance update, space needs study for our uh, police department phase two. If our police department is going to continue to be investing in new personnel, we're gonna have to consider in the future some expansion of space needs. Town hall, window replacement, and a second phase to that investment. Community center, HVAC replacement, and storm system maintenance. Again, that's gonna be continuing, continual investment moving forward. Uh, those being funded out of the general fund, and then we do have a couple projects proposed to be funded with rec unit fees, the Honeycutt Park playground replacement, and the Carol Howard Johnson Environmental and Educational Park restroom project. Total of $6.1 million in year three for capital projects. In year four for capital projects, again, continued investment in pedestrian projects. Fire station number six, design. Town hall roof replacement, community funding area uh, transit. And this is only if we are successful in getting a grant from Wake County to fund the other half. And then storm system maintenance. Of course, the area transit that is another item that was identified in the budget survey is continued investment in transit uh, opportunities as we continue to grow as a community. And then additional investment at the Hilltop Needmore Town Park and Preserve, and this is a bit of a swag number here, $2 million. We're going to do in, in next fiscal year the master plan for that project. There will be an expectation once there's a master plan done for that site that we invest in that site to make improvements over time. And this uh, accounts for about a $2 million rec unit fee investment in Hilltop Needmore Town Park and Preserve. That's year four. And then year five, fiscal year 26, again, another phase of, of pedestrian projects. Fire station number six, construction. Uh, and then this is a shared fire station or potentially shared fire station up on the northern end of our town with the town of Garner and Wake County. Fire station number one, interior bay painting. Fire station number two, apparatus and uh, bay encapsulation. Art center roof replacement. This would be the old section of the art center building, not the new section. The public service center open bay addition, phase two. Uh, we're anticipating the cost of this to be about $2 million and then continued investment in storm system maintenance, all of this out of the general fund, and then out of rec unit fees, community center, our current community center at South Park, a renovation to that facility, as well as 
greenway design, more greenway design to hopefully uh, put us in a competitive position uh, to compete for grants and opportunities to expand our greenway system. Five point almost nine million dollars in capital projects. Again, these are being paid for out of various funds, PAL bill, rec unit fees, and general fund. Any questions about capital projects over the five year period? Just a, a thought. Yes, sir. Um, in regards to the priority as far as infrastructure and pedestrian projects. Yes, sir. Um, and sidewalks. Is the proposed or possible paving of Railroad Street as far as sidewalks are concerned part of the proposed pedestrian project plan? I would have to go back and refer to the plan, to uh, the, the master plan, to see if that was a component in there. I don't recall off the top of my head. I can follow up with you, Commissioner, about that. But that's not to say that annually as we look at this and, I, and pinpoint the projects that we're going to do, that we could not not uh, prioritize that if that's what the board uh, saw fit, we could prioritize that as a potential investment. I know that currently, um, uh, Commissioner, our planning department is uh, sort of focusing uh, on a, as Wake County is beginning to go forward with another round of CDBG grant funding. We are looking at uh, developing a plan for the Railroad Street, uh, Lawrence Street, Lincoln Heights sort of area and uh, paving uh, sidewalks, investment in infrastructure will be a part of that focus. So as that becomes more clear, I could give you more, more details about how we could blend that into a, a plan. Or, or either the other option is we could actually fund it uh, ourselves rather than depending on CBG. We do, yes, that's my point okay. is we would have a plan and then we could at that point decide well, what part of our plan would include funding from PAL bill funds and what part would be CDBG funds. Okay, all right. Yeah. That's this not one. to say that it has to be funded with CDBG funds, but my point is that we're, because of that program, that has uh, caused us to prioritize the planning process for that. Okay, all right. <coughs> one of the Thank things you. I remember about Railroad Street was the lack of right-of-way. Um, and I don't know whether it was the Railroad Street the railroad side or the um, you know the other side of the street <coughs> but that that railroad street I walk it a lot um, and there's no sidewalk you, you have a sidewalk that comes up to railroad street off of um, Jones Street East mm -hmm. Jones I reckon it's west no it's East Jones Street mm -hmm. no west West Jones Street and um, but then you're just right out there on Railroad Street. You're walking in the Now resurfacing street. of the street itself, not talking about the pedestrian improvement, and that, that will be looked at as a part of our annual resurfacing uh, process that we do every year with Powell Bill funds. And so if that, when we look at our entire system and do our um, pavement condition assessment, if that uh, street itself uh, rises to the level of being a greater need than other streets in our community, then that would be put on the list for resurfacing in that fiscal year. Okay. Whatever fiscal year it rose to that point. It would okay. be interesting to have some connectivity on uh, from East, from West Jones Street um, back up railroad. Yes, yeah, so we are so highly, I don't, don't disagree with either one of your, your thoughts there, I think you are exactly right, the connectivity piece of it, and that is something that we are absolutely committed to focusing on as a part of our planning effort is, you know, now that we know that that's a part of a big part of our, of our survey response, and we, we knew it beforehand, but the survey response sort of cements that as being an interest in our community, we're looking for those opportunities to identify where connectivity can be enhanced, and then we can prioritize, since we're putting $300,000 a year aside for pedestrian improvements, we can begin to prioritize and say, we're gonna use this funding this year, this funding to go here the following year and, and really map out a plan of a $1.5 million sidewalk investment plan is what we're, what we're basically showing here. Okay, yeah. all right. You got a daycare up there or a, we do. Or a dog, uh, the pooch pad or something? What is it? Well, you got you have the pooch pad at the end of Railroad Street, but you also have on West Jones Street at the end of daycare there. Daycare. That's there. right. So it's 
it's, high, it's a highly traveled. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions about capital projects before I move on to personnel? Go ahead. Yes, sir. So personnel, uh, this is detailed by year. Um, here again, we have our various departments and how we map out personnel uh, recommendations over the course of uh, uh, that five-year period. And you can see again, year one, 1. almost five million all the way to year five, which drops to about 630,000 in new personnel. Um, let me just pause there real quick so I don't forget, Mayor. Approximately seven miles of sidewalk on Judd Parkway as a whole. And we have about 128 miles of sidewalk throughout our entire system. Throughout the entire system, 128 miles. Yes, miles. Sir. And with the addition of Judd Parkway, how much new are we bringing on? I think it's about two miles. About two miles, and that's pretty significant. And those are two miles that are critical because it goes all the way from uh, 42 back into uh, Highway 55, which connects Fleming Loop and um, on uh, the street there. What's the street that goes by the Lincoln Heights, the new street? Washington. Washington Street. Yes, sir. Um, that will be a significant area there, too. Okay. Thank you, Jim. And so uh, here with personnel, uh, again, I won't really rehash year one since we spent some time talking about that already. Year two, proposing a purchasing manager in the finance department, part-time support staff at the art center, public buildings supervisor, uh, parks maintenance worker and athletic program specialist in parks and recreation, four police officers, uh, firefighters, nine of those. This will be staffing up fire station number four, administrative assistant, uh, in uh, fire station for the fire department, uh, building inspector for inspections, a GIS technician, and a marketing and communications specialist in the communications department. Is the administrative assistant, is that going with the new fire station? Yes. That's what I figured, okay. Any questions about year two? Okay, year Three, support staff at the Art Center again, Community Center Senior Center Administrator, Senior Program Specialist, and a Recreation Program Specialist. This is uh, related to staffing up for our new Community Center Senior Center. Uh, just like the Fire Department Mayor, it's not 24 hours, but if you're going to build a facility, you got to staff the facility as well. Police Officer, four of those, and three telecommunicators, adding a <laughs> more support staff to our shifts and telecommunication. A construction inspector, building inspector, and a street maintenance worker. Any questions about year three? Year four, uh, here we have support staff at the Art Center, Community Center North Senior Center, support specialist and Community Center North Senior Center custodian, four police officers, a secondary evidence custodian, and administrative support in the police department, nine firefighters uh, staffing up fire station number five, <coughs> building inspector, and a sanitation equipment operator and sanitation workers, adding another route to our sanitation department in year four. And then finally in year five, a recreation specialist um, and parks maintenance worker, four police officers, a deputy fire marshal, and <coughs> Uh, building inspector. Any question about the new personnel recommendation? How many building inspectors do we have now? Four. How many will we have after this? Uh, yeah, that's right. I think 14 after the five year plan is built out, but nine currently, and I think we've got one on the way. They're doing an awful lot right now. Uh, our building inspectors are. I mean, if I compared oh, yes, them to this it. time last year, it's it's tremendous. Okay, then let's talk about transfers. We spent a little bit of time talking about this, but we do have transfers programmed over the five-year period. 
uh, rec unit fee reserves. Uh, these are transfers into the general fund to pay for debt service for the community center and Fleming Loop Park debt. So over the course of five years, you can see <laughs> what is being transferred in to help with that debt service. Sanitation truck reserves, 200,000 in year two, 390,000 in year four. Year four includes two vehicles, a new one and a replacement one. Vehicle reserves, nothing there. Rec unit fee reserves. Uh, here we've got uh, various amounts going into the general fund <coughs> to pay for various identified projects. And then that last column represents surpluses and deficits over the course of five years. So year three and five are surpluses. This is money coming into the general fund, or I'm sorry, uh, in, out of the general fund into debt reserves because we've got a surplus plan for in those years. Year two and year four, this is money going out of uh, debt reserves and transferring into the general fund to help offset those planned deficits. Overall, a balanced budget with a surplus at the end of five years. So those are how transfers hit our general fund bottom line. So to the mayor's question earlier, uh, assumptions of, of impacts to rec unit fees and other funds. So here um, in fiscal year 22, mayor, we're showing about a $1.3 million uh, increase in revenue and about a $1.6 million almost uh, expense for various projects. And our assumptions are uh, lower as we get into years four and five because we don't know uh, that far out if we'll keep the pace of growth and development. And so we're trying to be a little more conservative in our planning. It looks reasonable to me. Um, I think on average, we're looking at about a 750 uh, new homes a year over that five-year period, mm -hmm. uh, some higher numbers in years one, two, and three, and lower numbers in year four and five. Hopefully that's not the case, but we don't want to be too squirrely in our planning. Pal bill funds, uh, now this is based off of population as well as um, square miles of, of roadway or uh, linear miles of roadway. And so uh, here we, we show revenues coming in anywhere between 714 to 750,000, depending on the fiscal year. And expenses going out as much as 1.8 million in year uh, this year, the year that we're currently in, uh, but generally on average somewhere around 850 to $930,000. That encompasses resurfacing, that encompasses the pedestrian improvements we spent time talking about, some other maintenance. <coughs> Uh, then the debt reserve fund, uh, fund balance here, um, we, and these are the monies, again, going in and out surpluses and deficits over that five-year period. So at the end of five years, we think we're going to have around $1.3 million in debt reserve fund balance. And then general fund unassigned fund balance, this is funds that we can use for various projects. Uh, we believe, or at the end of fiscal year 20, our audited number was 18,533,000. Uh, we think it's entirely possible that we'll add a million dollars or thereabout to our plan, uh, to our fund balance at the end of this fiscal year. We've got $4.3 million planned to come out of fund balance. The big portion of that is for the commercial retail project uh, part uh, investment two. And then the $3 million uh, in year two would be the, the third investment. That's the, that's the final. The third and final. That's correct. Well, about $12.1 million, and uh, $12.1 million is right at the 25% number that we have set as a um, finance policy. But you're pretty consistent on maintaining that after in the 23. That's correct. And what it doesn't necessarily reflect, again, a conservative is our trend has been when we planned to use general fund balance, we don't end up using it, we end up adding to it. So for example, uh, we planned to, um, uh, to use general fund balance this year in fiscal year 2021, but we're actually adding a million dollars at the end. So we're doing better than budget, and that's allowing us to continue to do these investment projects without having to, to uh, dip into our fund balance. Part of that is growth, but part of it is um uh, 
budgeting in a in a very conservative fashion and managing it too. I got to give department directors, you know, they they're pretty um, efficient at being able to get things done and save save funds mm -hmm. to do that. So some fund balance notations, just as we kind of work through the last part of the general fund uh, five-year plan. Rec unit fee appropriations reflect projects that are identified in the projects by year description and the debt service required for financing Fleming Loop Park and the community center. Pow bill appropriations reflect 530 to 630,000 each year for Pow bill street resurfacing and other eligible expenses and about 300,000 a year for pedestrian projects. General fund balance appropriations reflect projects in the town's five-year plan that we've gone over and the debt service fund balance reflects budgeted surpluses and use of fund balance to balance the five-year plan over the horizon period. Are there any questions about the general fund five-year plan before we transition into the enterprise fund five-year plan? I think we're good. Okay, well then moving forward on the Enterprise Fund five-year plan, this will be a little bit quicker. We've got our five years of revenue assumptions. The blue lines are important to take a look at here. These show when water sales rate increases come into effect for water and for sewer. And if you look at years th two through four, we're seeing some revenues being generated by water rate increases beginning to increase our water rates to generate the revenues that we know that we're going to need to offset debt service when the Fuquay Verena Sanford water capacity project comes online. I like the way you said that. Yes, sir. I, I, I heard you at the budget <laughs> workshop. <laughs> loud and clear. Uh, again, $23.8 million in year one, all the way to $25 million in revenue in year two. And we'll talk about some assumptions here in a moment to what uh, amounts to those numbers. And here we are with our revenue assumptions, 3% increase in expense in year three for potential supplier increases. And so we've got some revenue increasing there uh, to offset that. And that's factored into our rate assumptions. Years two through four includes a phased in total of 90 cents per thousand gallon increase in water variable rates to offset the debt service associated with our existing customer capacity. And part of the upcoming year will include studying funding options for the Fuquay Verena City of Sanford water capacity project and the impact on rates and a planned system development fee study update. Uh, system development fees are based on 1,100 units in years one through four hmm. and 900 units in year five. Again, we're, we're looking like that's going to be more in reality, but we're trying to be a little bit uh, cautious not to get too far ahead of our skis on our assumptions. New customers are estimated at 1,000 single family accounts in years one through four and 750 in year five. New customer estimated uh, at 20 apartment buildings in years one and two based on known projects and none are assumed in years three through five. That doesn't mean that we won't have some uh, opportunities there, but we're basing years one and two on what we actually know. And then the customer growth is planned on known projects in the pipeline for years one through four and an expectation of continued residential demand in year five. And as we see year one transpire, we may change our assumptions in next year's five-year plan or two years from now when we adopt another five-year plan uh, because we don't really know the true impacts yet of some of these big employment announcements that have been made in our region and area. This chart or table right here shows the five-year rate assumptions. Again, years two through four uh, show us implementing the increases for water variable rates. Uh, and then you see some increases in base rates and variable rates for sewer as well uh, based on supplier um, increases in cost that we anticipate. And we are assuming no change in water residential and sewer residential system development fees. However, we will be next year doing a system development fee assessment to make sure that we, our rates are where they need to be. The enterprise fund expenditures here again, years two through five, we look at operations, uh, capital equipment, uh, maintenance projects, new capital projects, maintenance, um, and reimbursement projects, existing debt, new debt, and transfers to reserves. 
And remember I talked about earlier um, uh, changing our, our thought process a little bit since we've got a pretty substantial debt coming online with the Fuqua Verena Sanford Water Capacity Project. Um, here it shows us transferring some rather large amounts to reserves so that if a uh, development opportunity presents itself where there's a good return on investment mm -hmm. by us investing in a, in, in a water or sewer line or both, those funds will be there for us to do that. This is a balanced five-year plan. Operational line items are assumed to increase 3 to 5% per year, which is about trend. Debt associated with the Fuqua Verena Sanford uh, Water Capacity Supply Project was estimated based on a $70 million 20-year loan at 3.5% interest with payments starting in 24-25. This is, this is no joke. This is uh, our, our largest investment in a capital project uh, thus far has been the Terrible Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant, and that's half this and that was a pretty substantial project the uh, water capacity cost funding options and impacts on rates will be further studied this next fiscal year and capital improvement projects are limited as I mentioned just previously to needed projects and other projects with a favorable return on investment could be funded through reserve appropriations if the board sought to do so uh, in our five-year plan Again, we have capital equipment, capital projects, maintenance projects, and personnel listed for each of the five years. Uh, this table shows what they amount to in each of the fiscal years, 11.4 million in year one, and they vary through the course of the five years. This does not reflect funding for the water capacity project. However, financial capacity to support a $70 million project in fiscal year 23 with debt service beginning in 24 is a part of our five-year plan. So we're beginning to show those revenue assumptions as well as those debt assumptions in our five-year plan. These next tables just don't reflect that. So capital equipment, I won't go over the year one, which is on the far left column. Year two, we've got trailer, skid steer, um, a, a replacement trailer for the sewer department, telehandler for the wastewater treatment plant, uh, replacement work trucks, new administration vehicle, and utility truck for the wastewater treatment plant. Year three, replacing a mini excavator, an air brake trailer, mulching and sweeping attachments for our skid steer, outfall reel for our combo truck, a new crane truck for pump station mechanics, and replacement meter reading truck. And then we have some miscellaneous set aside for capital equipment that we may not know about the need for at the time. Year Four, uh, plate compactor for skid steer attachment, a replacement sewer mainline CCTV. This is our camera that uh, inspects our lines, a pull behind sewer jet replacement, and a valve cleaning truck. And in year five, replacing, replacing a mobile generator, replacing a mower, a meter reading truck, and a new utility truck with upfit. And then we have about 25,000 in miscellaneous there. That's for capital equipment over the course of five years. Capital projects, I won't go over year one because we did that a moment ago. Year two, uh, this is the second installment for the Sanford water design. Remember, $7 million. This is year two, three, uh, year two, which is $3 million. Water line replacements, water line oversizing, valve replacement program that we, we intend to be moving forward with, and then sewer line oversizing. $3.6 million in capital projects. Year three. Is that enough money for uh, waterline oversizing? Or? It is. It, it depends. I mean, some years it goes over, some years it, it, it's under, and so we kind of have a rolling amount there. Okay. Yeah. On par, on average, that's about where we, where we yeah. find ourselves. Okay. Year three, the final installment of the design for the, the uh, water capacity project, the water line, again, water line replacements and oversizing and valve replacement program and sewer line oversizing, $1.65 million. Year four, um, here we uh, propose or assume to purchase the Harnett County Water District that is in Wake County, uh, as well as um, some water line uh, improvements on Burt Road from Fleming Road to Star Chase Lane. 
and a water line replacements, various water line replacements, oversizing and a valve replacement program investment. Again, that's a phased project. And then on the sewer side, the Little Black Creek Interceptor, that's a part of our uh, five year, uh, it's a part of our 10 year plan for sewer infrastructure. And it really goes to uh, doing what our plan called for out into the ETJ area. And then the sewer line oversizing $50,000. $5.1 million in that year. And then year five, we have water line replacements, oversizing valve, and then on the sewer side, the sewer line system evaluation. This is something we, do, we would do periodically. Uh, sewer line oversizing and the public service center equipment shelter. $2.9 million. Any questions about capital projects before I go to maintenance projects? These are new projects, capital projects, maintenance projects. Here we know we're going to have system maintenance. This is going to look the same for the next uh, five slides. We know we're going to have water system maintenance. We know we're going to need to continue to invest in inflow and infiltration to keep uh, stormwater out of our sewer system or mitigate stormwater out of our sewer system, and then miscellaneous sewer pro maintenance projects. So here, these next five slides, year one, year two and three, <coughs> year four and five, they all range total, and that's near on average seven hundred fifty to eight hundred thousand dollar range. Do you have a way of um, judging the amount that we're spending for that infiltration if we're making progress on that? Oh yeah, we we are. We have a a, a model, a system model that we work with uh, engineers to. Uh, determine. To, to, to determine, yes, sir. And we, we can tell that the investment that we're making is, is paying off. Is, is paying off. It's having a substantial impact. Okay. And Ready? I believe Ready? I'd asked, uh, I don't want to quote an exact amount, but I had recently asked Jay, uh, you know, kind of what percent. Uh, we, we talked we, about do it. Do we know? think uh, yeah. stormwater or rainwater is getting into our system and uh, compared to maybe some of our peers in the area? And, and we're on sort of the lower half of that. That spectrum. Very good. Well, we've replaced a lot of uh, stuff in the we have in the older sections. That's true. Okay. And we have more to do. That's that's for, for certain sure. as well. Any questions about maintenance projects over the five-year horizon? If not personnel, it's not as detailed as uh, what you would find in a general fund, just because we're the enterprise funds, less departments. But here. Year one, assistant utilities director again, and a billing customer service representative. Year two, a wastewater treatment plant operator. Year three, two collection pump mechanics. Year four, we're not proposing any new personnel. And in year five, a water section utility, water section utility workers two, our system's growing further out. So we're gonna have to have utility workers to maintain that system, uh, manage that system, and then another customer service billing representative as our organization continues to grow. So that's the personnel by, by years. And then these next few slides just show the maps of planned projects. Uh, and we've got them sort of zoomed in by section. The north map, we've got the line on Hilltop Needmore Road. We are planning <coughs> for uh, another water tower kind of in that northern area. Upgrades, this is year one, Mills Branch, uh, Middle Creek Pump Station, um, Booster Pump up there near 1010 Road. And then we've got uh, this infrastructure uh, sort of in the west map, the ones in dark, some downtown water line replacements, Burt Road, that's fiscal year 24-25 that we talked about. Um, we've got the Kennebec water line next year. And then on the east side, um, these are the various water line and sewer line projects that we've got planned. Some of these are sewer force mains, very few are gravity lines. They're making a difference. They are. Uh, projects that are not in the five-year budget, but for consideration if funding is available, remember we said we see that there's a need in infrastructure out in these growth areas, but let's not in, put those in the ground just automatically. Let's make sure that there's actually a, a real potential for return on investment before we do that. So these are water and sewer capital projects that uh, should it look like 
um, there's going to be some opportunities for return on investment. We'll have money set aside to be able to prioritize and invest in these areas. So we do have a longer term plan. Any questions about the Enterprise Fund five year plan? I don't have any, Adam. I, I think you've covered it very well. Anybody else have any? Okay. I had a couple just general comments to, to make about it. Not a question necessarily, or a question comment with, with manager. Um, I like our enterprise fund and what we discussed at retreat and also at the budget workshop last time was continuing to aggressively put infrastructure in the ground as we know the uh, where the market is today and what's going to continue to happen in the market. You mentioned earlier about the um, Apple announcements. We could say everybody a little excited, but I mean there's a lot more that comes to that than just the 3,000 jobs that come all across Wake County out of ancillary benefits and, and 540 and the continued growth expansion. And so I do think this five-year plan does a good job of managing that growth and prepare, planning for it with water and sewer. Um, we also talked about in the current budget uh, adding to police and fire and core services and you, you have that plan laid out what we've discussed in the past. And what we did also discuss was at a future visitation of the five-year plan, possibly starting next year or something along those lines, a um, continuing a approach to get our ratios on both police and fire into those uh, ratios that are our target goal, so to speak, and that with the rapid growth at the same time, we're best case treading water. And so um, have you given any more thought to that in the future five-year plan, or is that something you're looking at we'll visit after this budget? No, or I think what we'll your thoughts? Yeah, the, the takeaway I had there was we will revisit that, um, and I think we'll be revisiting it annually, to be honest with you, um, as we continue to, do, to um, map out our five-year plan. We'll have a much clearer picture um, after, after this year if our trends in growth are holding stable and our growth in tax base is, is happening better than, than our estimates, and I think that will free up some capacity for the board to perhaps prioritize additional investments, police, fire personnel potentially being being one of those. Water and sewer, which goes out enterprise. Um, That's correct. Trash, Water and sewer happens roads, the same infrastructure way. Infrastructure like that too at the same time. Public works yeah. ha has a lot of area for that. Um, now on the enterprise fund, I, I'll just kind of caveat it that you know we're we're missing a or, or as far as the planning process for this budget went, we, we're missing a big piece of the puzzle and that is the water the water capacity piece of it so I I anticipate uh, being able to come back next year with with fiscal year 23 budget and fiscal year 23 through 27 five-year plan with a much clearer picture of what we're looking at from a financial standpoint there and a more comfortable plan with how we can invest in future infrastructure both, both and, on the water and, and sewer side and I like that. I think you did um, good feedback from our retreat and good feedback from the workshop on, on, on discussing those things tonight. One thing I bring to attention, too, is that um, DOT should start releasing some of our funds for some of our approved projects this year. That's and true. so this budget, which is a $50 million budget, which is the largest budget that we are approving without having to do a tax increase, that there's a whole amount of ancillary grants that we're receiving Absolutely. and going into road projects that don't necessarily have to be in here that have already been funded or matching grant or what had to be done for that. And so I may mention some of that on the night of um, the public hearing at the next next uh, meeting or the night of budget approval, because those are major intersection projects that will continue to be improved and money that the citizens did not have to pay right Absolutely. there. So where this is a $50 million budget, it may, it's more than that is what Absolutely. I'm trying to say there in regards to that. So um, appreciate feedback and what, what staff's done on this. Thank you. I think yeah. the public will be well receptive at the public hearing. Thank you. One one thing that I would add to it too, yeah, along the same lines that Mayor Pro Tem is, is speaking about, is that in the fall we will have the census numbers. We um, will. And those numbers will point. give us a truer reflection on the percentages. That's that a real good point. Our Mayor Pro Tem is talking about it. And then we'll need to work toward those percentages um, you know a little better um, but 
it, it appears to me that we're heading in the right um, in the right direction uh, with our budget and our planning our planning process and so much of this is about not necessarily the daily day operations it's about the long-term planning and this board has done a great job at retreat uh, really working toward um, putting in place uh, the long-term plans for uh, for our community and what our our wants and and dreams could be okay uh, Adam you have anything else you ready to uh, no, sir, my recommendation to the board, if there's no other questions or input, is to, uh, by motion, schedule a public hearing on the Town of Fuqua Verena fiscal year 22 budget for June 7th, 2021. Mayor, make a motion to schedule this public hearing as recommended by staff. Second. You got a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we got that schedule. We move to 7A. Am I right? <clears throat> Can I jump more? We haven't got to that yet. Okay, at this time, I'll ask the IT director will call on individuals who have virtually raised their hand um, by way of the Zoom app or by telephone wishing to address the town board will be unmuted one at a time. As a reminder, the public is those wishing to speak uh, on matters that are not subject to the public hearing. Those speaking are asked to limit their uh, to be clearly stated, your name and address for the public record and limit your comments to three minutes in order that all who wish to speak may be heard in a timely manner. Scott, do you have anybody? Uh, yes, sir, Mayor. We have uh, one hand raised. Christopher Miller, please unmute your mic. Chris Miller. Yeah, good evening, yes, Mayor sir. and members of the board. Can you hear me? Uh, we just barely can, Chris. Speak a little louder. Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor, members of the board, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. It's okay. A little louder if you can. Okay. No problem. My name is Christopher Miller. I'm a landscape architect uh, representing Wake Med in this rezoning and annexation. Just want to let you know that we're here uh, for uh, any questions and the uh, owners uh, on the line as well if any questions come up. So appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Scott, do you have anybody else? Uh, yes, sir. We have another Adam Bensley. Please unmute your mic. Good evening. Pausing the Public Safety Committee after hearing what so many people had to say is a slap in the face meeting. Telling us to form our own grassroots group and maybe you will attend is another slap in the face. Before the last board meeting, there was a sidewalk full of people outside town hall protesting the pause to the public safety committee. At the start of the meeting tonight, the sidewalk was full again. We want our voices to be heard. We are asking that the public safety committee be reinstated and that the board leads the effort to have a dialogue with the community. We are also asking for a cultural assessment of the entire police department. <laughs> there is nothing stopping Fuquay Verena from being the next Elizabeth City, and we need to do everything we can to make sure this does not happen. We are not going away, and this cannot be swept under the rug. The board needs to make this effort to act now. Thank you very much uh, for sharing your thoughts with us. Scott, do you have anybody else? No, sir, Mayor, no other hands are raised. Actually, we just had to right at the end there. Say that again? We have several more hands. Okay, go ahead. Okay, Elizabeth Parent, please unmute your mic. Hi there, can you hear me? Uh, I can. Is this Elizabeth? Can you give us your name and address for the record? It is. My name is Elizabeth Parent, and I live at 8620 Jordan Meadow Drive, Fuquay, Verena. 
Um, I'm calling because I have been watching what has been unfolding since the Malcolm Ziegler incident. And um, today I took my family down to the town hall because we saw a lot of people were gathering outside and we kind of wanted to get a little bit more information about that. And I sat and I listened to everybody and everything that they had to say. And I was pretty disappointed is not the correct term. Um, but I have listened to each of the town halls since, including the public uh, safety committee hearings. And wow, <laughs> um, I hope that you guys do better. And as the town grows, I really hope that it's not a dash less. And I yield the rest of my time. Thank you very much. We appreciate your comments. Uh, Scott, do you have anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, Cheryl Car Carter Ellis, please unmute your mic. Cheryl? Yes, good evening. Um, I want to echo the sentiments of both Adam and Elizabeth. Um, for the last two meetings, there have been community members outside of the town hall to express our disappointment in, in the disbanding of the public safety committee. There is just no reason when you all have told us that you're hearing us you're listening to us, um, you wanna be transparent that you close that meeting when so many people have made it clear we need transparency, we need a cultural assessment. Personally, I want to know what are the records of your police officers? Do we have a possible Derek Chauvin that works on that police department? Do we have people that have complaints because what we know historically, all complaints become larger complaints and it becomes worse. And we saw what happened with Malcolm Ziegler. I want to know why did that officer leave Durham and come to Fuquay? What was his record in Durham that he moved here? So those types of things we need to be transparent about. You all need to stop ducking and dodging and answer the questions of this community because we are not going away. We're gonna get even larger. There are even more people that are meeting behind the scenes. So you can't run, you can't hide. This is an election year, so we are gonna hold you accountable. And this, just to continue to say, I hear you without answering anything that we're saying is also extremely frustrating. And I know many of you on that board, I voted for you when I, lived in Fuquay, I worked on and helped you to get elected. So it is extremely disappointing to me to see what you all are doing because frankly, many of you are cowards. And it, it hurts as a woman of color to just see how badly you all are ignoring us. And as Adam said, you all could easily be Elizabeth City because you've already shown us that you don't have the courage, you don't wanna be held accountable and you refuse to be transparent. I'm gonna stop right there because I'm trying to be as respectful as possible, but I want you to hear the anger in my voice. We thank you for presenting that to us. Scott, do you have anybody else? Uh, yes, sir, Mayor. Uh, April Deddens, please unmute your mic. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes, April, just state your name and address for the record. April Dedden, 6121 Hope Lane, Tukwe. Um, I'm just here to also, uh, you know, say the same thing that we want the Public Safety Committee reinstated. Um, it was definitely a slap in the face when so many of us spoke up and said we want dialogue with the community. Um, so the solution was to end it altogether. Um, you know, we're not saying we're against the police, but everyone's human. We all make mistakes. Um, to have a cultural assessment is the right thing to do, especially in light of what we're seeing that's going on all over the country, not just North Carolina. Um, and like we've all kind of said the same thing, but we've 
been out there trying to make our voices heard um, and it's just falling on deaf ears and we're not gonna go away. So we want the Public Safety Committee reinstated and our voices to be heard. Thank you. Thank you, April. Scott, do you have anybody else? Yes, sir, Mayor. Uh, Will Wingfield, please unmute your mic. Will? Good evening, board. How are you? Good, Will. Come right on. So uh, I'm actually just getting back from Elizabeth City. It's interesting to hear people reference that. There's a lot of similarities in the communities. Um, and they're right. You know, I, I, I'm, I know all of you. You all know me. Um, it, it's, it's kind of embarrassing to watch the way this is playing out. To hear from the people in the community that aren't that, that nobody's getting responses to their emails to their inquiries, you know it's easy to do the wrong thing. It's hard to do the right thing. Um, governance is a difficult process. You're never gonna make everybody happy, um, but there's a job to do. You guys were elected to represent the people in this community and to lead them and to respond when they're concerned. And I'm just appalled about uh, by how many people have told me that they've emailed you guys about these concerns and have gotten no responses. Um, so, you know, I hope that y'all do some soul searching, dig deep in your gut, do your jobs, because it's not just to be cheerleaders, Fuqua. The people in this community have some concerns that need to be addressed. It's not, you know, if you're not willing to even respond to emails and communications from your citizens and your constituents, you don't need to be sitting there. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you a lot, Will. Appreciate your comments. Scott, do you have anybody else? No, sir, Mayor. No other hands are raised. Okay. Uh, the hearing is now uh, closed. Um, that's where we're headed. Okay. Um, I we, don't see a lot of similarities in Fico Arena and Elizabeth City. I don't know what their situation is because I'm not involved with their town council to know how their town council is made up. But I will say that this is a fine town council here that supports its police department. Our police department has been proactive, progressive, and worked on many ways of trying to be involved. And do we always have areas? Um, of our community that we hear, hear people raise concerns and we listen and I listen to all concerns, but, um, I don't, don't think it's fair to compare our, I think that, um, given this current environment that we have to hear and not ignore the comments that have been made from citizens as well as people who are concerned about how we can better improve policing here in Fuquay Arena to avoid anything similar to what has what is happening throughout the nation that Fuquay Arena is 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 not necessarily immune to any catastrophe that can happen and the idea I think that we hear expressed is to have transparency and accountability at some level so that people who feel as if there is not necessarily a fairness and equity in regards to policing can be heard. And I think that we have to look at some way we can communicate and have the opportunity to have people feel as if they are safe. Certainly, and you have made this comment before in regards to the, the Public Safety Committee, I, th I thought that that was an opportunity for us to continue to develop dialogue and strategies to address some of the concerns that have been expressed tonight. Um, I don't think this issue is just going to go away because it's such a broad issue and it impacts people in this community as well as other communities too. I think that as a board, we need to have a conversation about how we can address these concerns and how we can at least look at 
what is being expressed tonight and have it valid. It's not a, I don't think these comments that have been made per se are from the, the spirit of not, appreciation, not appreciating law enforcement, not appreciating the efforts of the police department in this community, but it's out of a genuine concern. Um, I just think that we aren't in a position where we should just ignore it uh, and we at least need to have some idea of how we can open up dialogue with the citizens so that we can hear their concern and in turn respond appropriately so that we in the future will make sure that every citizen in this community feels safe. And I think that that's the point where we are, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Harris. I would like to um, report or let our town manager respond um, because our staff has been meeting um, and developed some very good dialogue um, you know, with, with our community. Um, Adam, you want to make a comment or two about this? And yeah, I'd be happy to, Mayor. I, I could not make the first meeting, but I plan to, uh, to attend. Um, yeah, thank you. So uh, following our last, uh, or the town board meeting, I guess it was two board meetings ago, um, uh, I had uh, some members of the community reach out. Uh, well, actually, they reached out to the entire town board. Um, and um, express their thoughts and concerns. I responded on behalf of the town uh, as your manager. And, and it was it was kind of what Commissioner Harris was was talking about. It's a it's a group of yeah. I'll get to that citizens. in a second. Yeah. Yes. And so um, uh, I responded on behalf of the town to uh, representatives of of uh, what is uh, known as the Fuquay Verena Community Alliance. Um, right now, this is it's a group of um, uh, I don't know, 10 or 12 representatives of citizens in our community, and they, uh, they had, again, emailed and expressed some concerns, voiced some concerns and, and issues, and I responded and said that I would be happy to meet with them at any time to discuss those. And um, they took me up on that offer, and last week, um, I and Chief Fonstock met with three members of, of, of that community uh, citizens group, and um, we had about an hour and 45 minute meeting. And I thought it was uh, very positive, very productive. Um, I believe that you all received an email uh, after that meeting from one of those uh, citizens, um, also expressing positivity that came from that. We talked about a lot of different uh, subject matter during that meeting uh, to include a cultural assessment. Um, and so uh, the dialogue, I think, again, was productive. Um, what came from that was a commitment to continue to have open dialogue and conversation. We've got another uh, meeting planned for uh, us to uh, further those conversations and discussion. And perhaps it will be some of the same people who joined us at the meeting or join me, me and Chief Fonstock at the meeting last week. It may be some different representatives from, from the Fuquay Verena Community Alliance that come next time. Uh, but the goal is to uh, talk about ways that the town, local government, the board, management, professional staff uh, can work with our community to address um, valid and, and honest concerns that they have in a productive, positive way. Um, what some of the things we talked about was a, a joint and unified uh, statement between local government and community, a statement of unity and togetherness that uh, I committed to, to continue working with them on. Um, we talked about uh, doing further me, doing further uh, research and, <coughs> and analysis on, um, uh, on cultural assessments. Um, not specifically for the Fuquay Verena Police Department, uh, but uh, cultural assessments for the organization as a whole, which would include the Fuquay Verena Police Department if we chose and decided that that was something that um, made sense to do. I was not prepared to obviously commit 
uh, to that on the town board's behalf. And, and frankly, I, I uh, explained that I needed more time to research uh, cultural assessments so I could provide an informed um, feedback to the town board on, on that, uh, which I committed to doing as well. Um, we talked about, again, having uh, uh, consistent and uh, uh, planned meetings, uh, being professional staff and, and management with uh, these community members. I think there will be, there will be opportunity in the future that um, it makes sense for board members, uh, potentially, certainly the mayor, to attend those and be a part of that dialogue and have conversation. We're just kind of starting this process. But I came away very, very positive about this. And these are uh, community members that voiced opinions and thoughts during the public safety committee meetings. These are committee, or these are community members that have voiced thoughts and concerns and, and expressed their thoughts on social media. These are citizens who truly want to um, be involved in um, helping local government uh, and helping the elected officials make our town uh, even better than it already is today. From a public safety standpoint, from a organization as a whole. We talked about uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion as a part of our uh, dialogue and conversation. We talked about training for, uh, for employees. Uh, it was a pretty broad subject matter that we fit into a, an out. We talked about data for police department, for our police department, and what is public record and what is not public record and how we can help facilitate. Uh, you know, Chief was very helpful in talking about how we can help facilitate um, uh, data back into the, the hands of the community so that they can be informed and, and see. A lot of the data exists already, it's there. Uh, we just have to help uh, point our citizens who have an interest in looking at this information in the right direction. And there were some specific data that was asked for uh, at this meeting that Chief uh, committed to going back and, and, and looking at to identify what we have available and what what our system uh, uh, allows us to populate so that we can provide it to them. We're not, we're, we have, uh, for those things that are public record, we have nothing to hide. We're happy to share that information. We have data on traffic stops and, and things of that nature that we're more than happy to share. It's there already. It's there on the internet to be found. We're happy to point people in the right direction or if we have to, print the paper out on the copier and hand it to them. In, by hand, if that is what helps make it easier. So I was, uh, and, I, and I wanna also say um, that I was extremely um, impressed with the, um, the spirit for which uh, our citizens who represent, who represent this grassroots, grassroots community group, the spirit for which they came to that meeting. They were, um, they were very positive, they were there in the spirit of cooperation and collaboration and working with um, uh, local government, whether it's management, police chief, department heads, elected officials, they just want to be a part of improving and making Fuquay Varina a better community. And I got to give the three individuals that attended that meeting um, recognition, uh, not by name necessarily, but recognition, because uh, I don't know if they want to be recognized by name, but recognition for the spirit in which they came and um, are th were there in a positive way. And so I think we are on a, a, a uh, uh, um, and I'm not sure what, to what degree of communication the individuals that are part of that uh, community alliance are having dialogue or communicating with some of the individuals that spoke tonight. Maybe there's a not communication happening, so I'm not sure to what degree people are aware of what's going on uh, in terms of um, uh, communication, but I've committed as your manager uh, and your professional staff on your behalf um, uh, to begin having that dialogue and conversation. We had a good first meeting, and I think we'll have good many more meetings after that. I don't want to put a number on it because uh, 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 the citizens that are part of this grassroots group want to have uh, consistent collaboration and dialogue. And I think that based on our experience 
this first meeting, uh, we ought to do that. It, it, it can only make us a stronger community by doing that. I, so, I think it's an exciting, um, exciting thing, Adam, and I, I appreciate what you're, what you're trying to, um, to help do, and I appreciate our police chief too. Um, this is the way your community gets better, is, um, is having the dialogue with citizens that are truly interested. Um, and I felt like it was a good idea that Adam shared Thank you. this with all, everybody. Thank you, Adam. Okay, I'm gonna move on to Blake Helmy. Is this 6A? Public hearing, first one. Yes, sir. Okay, no items. Let's continue to item seven. Seven A? Yes, sir. Okay, public hearings. Public hearings are a time for the petitioner to present his or her request and for the public to give input and to voice their favor or opposition to the request. If you wish to speak, the IT director will call on individuals that have virtually raised their hand by way of the Zoom app or telephone. Those wishing to speak may address the town board uh, one at a time uh, and will be unmuted. Uh, those speaking are asked to begin by stating their name and address for the public record. Please limit your comments for three minutes and all that wish to speak in a timely manner. Zoning map amendment and land use plan amendment. Wake Med Property Services, 2400 North uh, Main Street, REZ 2021-02. And the one gentleman, I think, was wanting to speak about this, Adam, that spoke earlier. Yeah, he spoke earlier, said he was available if we had any questions in support. I don't, I don't particularly have any questions or anything. I don't know that anybody else does. Okay. Um, more information about this agenda item will be presented by Town Manager Mitchell. All right, thank you, Mayor. The uh, purpose of this agenda item is to consider a request that zoning map amendment for a total of 18.623 acres located at 2400 North Main Street from the Residential Agricultural RA Zoning District and General Commercial GC Zoning District to the General Commercial Conditional Zoning District GC CZD and the corresponding land use plan amendment from mixed use neighborhood MUN to suburban office SO. The subject property is located in the town's extraterritorial jurisdiction or ETJ. The property is the subject of an annexation petition request ANX 2021-03. Currently there are two accessory structures on the property. The zoning map petition uh, request approval of the General Commercial Conditional Zoning District, GCCZD. The zoning district is intended to permit a mix of high-intensity non-residential development. The petitioner has requested that the following permitted use conditions be made applicable to the subject property, and those are that the following uses shall be prohibited. And I'll run through these real quick. Adult uses, pet service, electronic sweepstakes gaming operation, automotive repair, car wash, towing service and storage, vehicle service station, automotive express service, mixed use development, live work unit, banquet hall, cultural adaptive use, congregate living facilities, family care home, group home, vehicle charter services, place of worship, place of worship temporary, recycling collection station, recycling transfer center, broadcasting station, beach bingo, game room, golf course, brew pub, bulk goods, retail, convenience cash business, convenience store or kiosk, dry cleaning a laundromat, pawn shop, shopping center, specialized repair service, tire service and sales, vehicle parts and accessories retail, automotive paint and body shop, vehicle boat equipment sales and or rental, special trade contractor, storage facility, wholesale trade, wholesale building supply, yard sale, greenhouse nursery, kennel commercial boarding breeding, kennel private use domestic. So a good portion of the allowable uses in the general uh, commercial zoning district are being prohibited as a part of this petition. Surrounding properties are a mix of cleared agricultural land, single family residential, commercial and institutional. The 2035 Community Vision Land Use Plan designates the subject property as the mixed use neighborhood MUN classification. Since the requested Zoning is incompatible with the designation of MUN. The petitioner has included a land use plan amendment as a part of the zoning map petition.
petition. Public water and sewer are available to serve the subject property. The subject property has access to North Main Street, US 401. The 2035 Community Transportation Plan classifies North Main Street as a 200-foot right-of-way and is identified as being a six-lane median divided road with a sidewalk and side path. It is currently a four-lane median divided road. In addition to access to North Main Street, the Community Transportation Plan calls for the future Fuquay Verena Parkway to bisect the property from east to west. It is classified as a 120-foot right-of-way and identified as being a four-lane median divided road with side paths. Future development of the site will require dedication of the proposed right-of-way and construction of two travel lanes with a side path. The petitioner held a neighborhood meeting on March 10th via the Microsoft Teams web application. The meeting report was provided to you in your agenda materials. The petitioner has proposed a land use plan amendment for the mixed use neighborhood to suburban office as it is more compatible with the intended and surrounding uses. Land classified as suburban office is intended to support opportunities to uh, concentrate employment in the town during normal work days. Uh, suburban office designated property includes both large scale isolated buildings with numerous employees as well as areas containing multiple businesses that support and serve one another. They're basically buffered, or they're typically buffered, excuse me, from surrounding development by transitional uses or landscaped areas and are often located in close proximity to major highways and thoroughfares. This amendment supports land use plan, the land use plan recommendation of LU3 encouraging transitional uses and intensities in and around project boundaries, which is intended to improve visual and spatial compatibility with surrounding uses. Additionally, this amendment supports the land use plan recommendation of CF1 investing in existing growth areas, which encourages the extension of utilities and growth of development in the areas that are already uh, in the growth process to maximize effectiveness. And as such, the requested land use plan amendment is consistent with the 2035 land use plan's vision. The land use plan amendment, if approved, will allow for the site to be developed more consistently and appropriately as it relates to the proposed use and surrounding use. Management and staff are recommending approval of the proposed zoning map amendment with the corresponding land use plan amendment. It is consistent with the 2035 Community Vision Land Use Plan and is reasonable in the public's best interest for the following reasons. First, although the requested zoning map amendment is not consistent with the 2035 Community Vision Land Use Plan classification of mixed-use neighborhood, the petitioner has opted again to request a change of the land use plan to suburban office which is appropriate to the surrounding and proposed uses. Second, the requested zoning map amendment is consistent with the 2035 Community Vision Land Use Plan's recommendations of LU3, encouraging transitional uses and intensities, and CF1, investing in existing growth areas. And finally, conditions <coughs> proposed by the petitioner effectively limit future development so that it is compatible with surrounding areas. At the April 19th regular meeting of the planning board, the planning board unanimously voted to recommend approval to the town board. There is no fiscal note to report on this as it is a zoning map amendment and land use plan amendment request. The recommendation to the town board this evening is to conduct a public hearing followed by a motion to approve REZ 2021-02, a zoning map amendment at 2400 North Main Street from the residential RA zoning district and general commercial GC zoning district to the general commercial conditional zoning district, GCCZD, and the corresponding land use plan amendment from mixed use neighborhood to suburban office. The proposed zoning map amendment and corresponding land use plan amendment are consistent with the 2035 community vision land use plan and are reasonable in the best interest of the public for those reasons identified by management and staff. I'm happy to answer any questions that the town board might have either before or after the public hearing. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Adam. Okay, we'll go ahead then with the public hearing. The hearing is now open. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of this zoning map amendment and land use plan amendment? Uh, yes, sir, Mayor. We have uh, one phone number, uh, phone number ending in 9366. Please unmute your phone. Hello, come on. Hello. Yes, you're on. This is the mayor. Uh, this is Judith Baker. I go by Ann Baker. I wanted to um, 
speak in opposition of this. Uh, I own the property. I think with all the, the talk that just went on, I'm talking about the property on Hilltop need more road. Is this including this property that was just presented? Uh, this property is on uh, no, for this is not the one you're talking about. This property is okay, on so it's 40, 7A, we down, they Street. were talking so much I wasn't sure if it was in covering because they were talking about the, the um, zoning map amendment too. So I wanted to make sure that which one are you, were they just talking about 7A or had they gotten to 7C? 7A. We're talking about okay. 7A. Okay, well I'll come back in later then. That'll be fine and thank you for calling in. Uh, yes. Scott, do you have anybody else? No, sir. Okay. Uh, does anyone wish to speak in opposition to this zoning map amendment and land use plan amendment? Scott, you got anybody? No, sir. Okay. The hearing is now <coughs> closed. Any discussion by the board? And if not, what is the pleasure of the board? And I would certainly recommend it. Mayor, this brings a, um, a, a medical related building here to our town and a very nice facility on what, what we expect out of them here and amenities and services that many of our citizens have asked about and, and wondered when they would get one and so I'm glad to have Wake Med partnering to come to Keep Wave Arena and build this facility right here. It's something that will be needed and be strategic along as you mentioned earlier with our fire station expansions and 540 being nearby and uh, that being the case I welcome Wake Med and Keep Wave Arena make a motion to approve as recommended. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. This is an exciting day for Fuquay Verena. Um, done a good day's work. Okay, 7B, Voluntary Annexation Petition, Wake Med Sur Property Services, 2400 North Main Street, ANX 202103. Uh, Adam, you want to speak any more on this particular one? Yes, this is an annexation, Mayor, so I yes, probably sir. should from a procedural okay. um, standpoint. Uh, the purpose of uh, this agenda item is to consider the adoption of an ex uh, annexation ordinance extending the corporate limits of the town of Fuquay Marina following a receipt of a voluntary annexation petition of property owned by Wake Med Property Services containing a total of approximately 18.623 acres. The property is contiguous to the town's corporate limits. Uh, water is available uh, to the property, uh, having fire flow at the subject property of 2,000 to 3,000 gallons per minute. Sewer is also available to the property. The town will not uh, be required to provide garbage services to the property as this property is intended to be non-residential in use. At the April 20th, 2021 regular meeting, the town board instructed the town clerk to investigate the sufficiency of the applicant's petition for voluntary annexation. The town clerk certified at that time that the petition was sufficient and meets the requirements prescribed by North Carolina general statutes. The town board also adopted a resolution setting a public hearing for this evening's meeting. The present total value of the property is $2,107,352. Uh, the recommendation tonight is to conduct a public hearing followed by a motion to adopt the annexation ordinance to extend the corporate limits of the town of Fuquay Verena to include the property owned by Wake Med Property Services annexation petition ANX 2021-03 as presented and recommended. I'm happy to answer any questions the board might have before or after the public hearing. I think we're okay. The hearing is now open. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of this voluntary annexation petition? There are no hands raised, Mayor. Okay. Does anyone wish to speak in opposition to this voluntary annexation petition? I see no hands raised. Okay. The hearing is now closed. Any discussion by the board? And if not, what is the pleasure of the board? And I would certainly recommend this too. <laughs> We're going to welcome them to town and rezone them and tell them we're glad to have them. That's we definitely got to annex them. That's right. Mayor, make a motion to approve as recommended. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now we're at 7C. 
zoning map amendment and land use plan amendment, Patrick Riley, uh, Jernigan, Commercial Properties, LLC, 29, 3995 and 4001 Hilltop Needmore Road, REZ 2021-03. Uh, more information by Town Manager Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. The purpose of this agenda item is to consider a requested zoning map amendment for a total of 1.303 acres located at 3995 and 4001 Hilltop Needmore Road from the Residential Agricultural RA Zoning District to the Corridor Commercial Conditional Zoning District CCCZD and the corresponding land use plan amendment at 3995 Hilltop Needmore Road. Property identification 0688120572 from rural residential to suburban office. The subject properties uh, are located in the town's extraterritorial jurisdiction or ETJ. The properties are subject to an annexation. An annexation petition is not being submitted at this time. There is currently a single family home on one of the properties. The zoning map amendment petition requests approval of the Corridor Commercial Com uh, Conditional Zoning District, CCCZD. The zoning district is intended to accommodate medium scale intensity, non-residential development. The petitioner has requested the following permitted use conditions be made applicable to the subject property, and these uh, uses are prohibited, the ones I'm about to read. Palm Reader, Beach Bingo, Bar and Nightclub, pawn shop, convenience cash business, recycling collection station, recycling transfer center, automotive express service, automotive repair, car wash, auto detailing, service station and center, tire and sales, congregate living facilities, banquet hall and cultural adaptive use, conference center, stadium or arena, drive-in movie theater, ambulatory healthcare, hospital medical center, park and ride, parking deck, transit terminal uses, vehicle, uh, vehicle charter services, substation electrical, game room, and golf course. All those that I've mentioned are being proposed to be prohibited as a part of this zoning petition. Surrounding properties are a mix of single family, residential, and commercial. The 2035 Community Vision Land Use Plan calls for suburban office and rural residential classifications at the subject properties. And so you can see on the uh, bottom left of your screen, uh, suburban office is the majority of the, the property being proposed with rural residential in the back uh, corner. Uh, the petitioner has included a land use plan amendment for the smaller portion of property at 3995 Hilltop Newmore Road as a part of the zoning map petition. And so this property is uh, surrounded by uh, commercial village, suburban office, and highway commercial land use future land use. Public water is available to serve the subject properties. Sewer service to the site will be extended by the developer. The subject properties have access to Hilltop Needmore Road. The uh, 2035 Community Transportation Plan classifies Hilltop Needmore Road as a 110 foot right of way and is identified as being a four lane median divided road with side pass. It's currently a 60 foot right of way with two lane road. The petitioner held a neighborhood meeting on March 22nd via the Zoom web application and that uh, meeting report was provided to you in your agenda materials. The 2035 Community Vision Land Use Plan calls for the rural residential classification at um, 3995 Hilltop Needmore Road. Again, that's that little uh, uh, portion of property. Let me see if I can just point it out so that there's no question about which one it is. Can you see that right there? Mm -hmm. Which one, Adam? The one with the arrow on it? Where it says Adam Mitchell. That's right. Yes, okay. I just put the arrow there. Mm -hmm. That's a little piece that's staying. That's a little piece that is being proposed to be changed from rural residential to suburban office to match the other two pieces that are part of the assemblage of property. In other words, 80 percent of it's already correct so okay 
The petitioner has included a land use plan amendment from rural residential to suburban office to allow for land use consistency across the subject properties or the assemblage of properties. Land classified as suburban office is intended to support opportunities to concentrate employment in the town during normal work days. They include both large scale isolated buildings with numerous employees as well as areas containing multiple businesses that support and serve one another. They are typically buffered from surrounding development by transitional uses in landscaped areas and are often located in close proximity to major highways and thoroughfares, which this is. The amendment supports the land use plan's recommendation of LU3 encouraging transitional uses and intensities in and around project boundaries, which is intended to improve visual and spatial ca uh, capability with surrounding uses, compatibility. Additionally, this amendment supports the land use plan's recommendation of CF1 investing in existing growth areas, which is, encourages the extension of utilities and growth of development in areas that are already in the growth process to maximize effectiveness, which this is as well. As such, the requested land use plan amendment is consistent with the 2035 land use plan's vision. The land use plan amendment, if approved, would allow for the site to be developed more consistently and appropriately as it relates to the proposed use and surrounding area. Management and staff recommend approval of the proposed zoning map amendment with the corresponding land use plan amendment. It is consistent with the 2035 community vision land use plan and is reasonable in the public's best interest for a number of reasons. First, although the requested zoning map amendment is not consistent with the current 2035 community vision land use plan classification of rural residential for that one small tract, the petitioner has opted to request a change of the land use plan to suburban office for that portion of property which allows the consistency across the subject properties and is more appropriate to the surrounding and proposed uses. Second, the requested zoning map amendment is consistent with the 2035 Community Vision Land Use Plan's recommendation of LU3, encouraging transitional uses, and CF1, investing in existing growth areas. And finally, third, conditions proposed by the petitioner effectively limit future development so that it is compatible with surrounding areas. Uh, as noted in the neighborhood meeting report, there were restrictive covenants applicable to this property. It has been confirmed that the covenants were terminated on August 20th of 2020 with signatures of a majority of the current owners of lots in the Hilltop Village subdivision. At the April 19th regular meeting of the planning board, the planning board unanimously voted to recommend approval. There is no fiscal note to report on this as it is a zoning map and land use plan amendment. The recommendation to the town board this evening is to conduct a public hearing followed by a motion to approve REZ 2021-03, a zoning map amendment at 3995 and 4001 Hilltop Needmore Road from the residential agricultural zoning district to the commercial corridor conditional zoning district and the corresponding land use plan amendment at 3995 Hilltop Needmore Road from the rural residential uh, land use uh, classification to suburban office. The proposed zoning map amendment and corresponding land use plan amendment are consistent with the 2035 community vision land use plan and are reasonable in the best interest of the public for those reasons identified by management tonight. I'm happy to answer any questions that the town board has either before or after the public hearing. I think we're good. We'll go ahead and move on into our public hearing. <clears throat> the hearing is now open. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of this zoning map amendment and land use plan amendment? Scott, do you have anybody? <clears throat> yes, sir. We have a couple hands raised. Uh, Patrick Riley, please unmute your mic. Hi, good evening. I'd like to say thank you to the mayor and the board for each one's time and consideration this evening. I'm speaking in favor as both the owner and as a future business tenant at the site. Uh, with approval, this site has become the location for our real estate office. We've been searching for a convenient location on a growing corridor, and we're excited what's already going on along Hilltop Needmore with the town park and preserve, the future rec centers, uh, the Wake County School site, and the, of course multiple neighborhoods that are under construction. I believe this is a great location for us as a local real estate company and the site will be a, a quality and an appropriate transition between the existing food line shopping center and the remaining single family homes. So for those reasons, I just ask the board to consider 
for voting in favor of this zoning map amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. Does anyone else wish to speak in favor of this zoning map amendment and land use plan amendment? Uh, we have another hand raised uh, phone number ending in 9366. Uh, 9366, come on. Hello. This is Judith Baker, but I, I'm sorry. I, I wish to oppose it, not to support it. Okay, we'll we'll get to you in just a minute. We we get. Okay, that's. Just stay. You stay there. I reckon. Have you got anybody else, Scott? No, sir. Okay. We'll move on then. Anybody wishing to oppose this zoning map amendment and land use plan? Okay. Now go right ahead. Uh, my name is Judith Baker. I go by Ann Baker. I own the property at 4005 Hilltop Needmore Road, which is approximately 1.3 acres, which is a, equivalent to the size that he's talking about in this proposal. Um, my son lives there. It's a house, and we've renovated, and it's, um, it's a residential. The property across from us is residential. The properties down below us are all residential, and they're building a big residential development across the road so it's not all commercial in our, this area and um he, there was a statement made that in august that the majority signed i'm on the property right beside up this group never even sent me the information for me to sign or not to sign so i felt like i was deliberate out of that uh, when they were making this decision um, to present this um that's all I wanted to say. The, uh, my, I have concern because my son and granddaughter live there, and I'm concerned about the light and the noise. And at the the planning board meeting, I heard someone in the background speaking. I don't know if they were on the board or what, but talking about uh, there was already lights and cars and the parking lot. This building, our ha house is on the opposite side. Of it. It's not where the lights are. It's not where the cars are parked for the food line and all that. So it is quiet, and it's, it is not... Um, a lot of commercial around this area. So I just wanted to speak in opposition because I feel, feel like that we need to be considered those that have homes or houses in that area that are for residential use, not all. All I hear on, with listening tonight is the concern about the commercial growth, and I know that's gonna happen, but there are people that have homes and wish to not expand into commercial every, every corner. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Ann. Scott, do you have anybody else that wishes to speak in opposition to the zoning map amendment and land use plan amendment? Uh, no, sir. No other hands are raised. The hearing is now closed. Uh, is there any discussion by the board? And if not, what is the pleasure of the board? Manager, what is road improvements will be required? Would they, would they do improvements? Will it be pavement in lieu of? Um, oh, being at such uh, a small width on Hilltop Let yeah, me have our uh, planning director maybe step to the uh, podium here. We'll try this out. Let's do a, ca a test case as well. She's mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, Pam. First one used a podium ever, I think. Ma make sure the uh, green mic light For over is a on. year. It is green. Good evening. So, um, I believe they would have to do half of the CTP requirements along their frontage. Um, so I believe that is a 110 foot right of way. All right, it's 110 foot right of way, four lane median divided with side paths. So they would be responsible for the improvements, right of way dedication, and half of the construction of the roadway. Generally speaking, the median is a fee and lieu because you can't build half a median. Um, but the roadway, curb and gutter, and sidewalk. Yeah, I think that the food line beside it does not have sidewalk going down to it, or they may have it coming right down to the edge. I'm trying to remember, and I'm trying to look at the satellite picture. I drive by it every single day, but don't always hear <laughs> when it's sidewalk right there. Has there been any consideration in this type like scenario, instead of having them put the improvements in, do pay, uh, payment in lieu of, and as a requirement, simply because a short little 100, 130 feet strip does not provide much value, but we could use that money somewhere else more valuable. Generally speaking, we require the improvements just because that's how the patchwork quilt gets made is that this is our one opportunity to get that sidewalk in if the Food Lion um, development ever redeveloped. Mm -hmm. 
made changes, they'd be required to add it as well. So. And it may be that the property owner would prefer it too. I, if it was me, I understand that's our, our policy typically, but I think that's something um, management we've discussed for retreat and different things of um, dedicating right away and requiring payment in lieu where we can better use money in areas and thus tie in next door to the food line. So I, I understand some thought there, and I know you you repeat what ordinance is state right there too not, that, uh, not necessarily your personal opinion of whether it should or should not go there. right I mean the one benefit too is is the pedestrian accommodations from the building would then tie out to the public way uh, which is also a de development requirement so they would be required to have some sort of pedestrian ADA accessible route from their building on site to the sidewalk along the frontage and, uh, and I get the si sidewalk there time and I just um, and sidewalk does exist all the way to this property line that's what I was thinking um, Adam if this passes tonight then I would uh, encourage y'all to look at alternatives in that putting sidewalk in but maybe not the road and improvements or some kind of payment lieu of if it's the best investment to go there versus using the money on a different project to tie in the sidewalks but not a short widened road at 130 foot of road widened is not going to provide a whole lot of value at the end of the day so that's all well I'm as, as fast as the town is developing that it's it it will develop quicker than it did a good number of years ago but this one right here does link with the sidewalk is what we're saying. So it won't make sense. I'd encourage staff yeah. to look at that at that time and that could be a proposal at the, uh, at a, at the um, site plan time. Um, other than I don't really have any other comments. I mean, it's right beside a commercial property. I mean, they want commercial zoning beside commercial zoning. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Mm -hmm. I, I was just going to make a comment. I think that you know, in terms of, uh, I'd echo what Mayor Potem said, but I think in terms of traffic, I mean, if, if we had a uh, community center or in a senior center coming in a school uh, being built, that would have far more, that would have a far more impact than this little project would have um, on uh, the traffic situation. So, like. Mayor Pro Tem said it's surrounded by commercial and we have um, potentially a lot of commercial coming there or high impact commercial coming there in, in the school. So I think that the area is the way it is and changing um, and, and that could happen in the next several years. So I, I think that that's the way that is going and that's what it's surrounded by now. That would be my comment. Any other discussion? Now I would just draw the, the town board's attention to uh, you know, with the exception of this sort of back portion that is rural residential, all of the road frontage on our future land use plan calls for a suburban office. So it's not like it's all calls for rural residential and, and the petitioner is requesting uh, a complete um, change from the future land use plan. The petitioner is requesting consistency with the future land use plan. The only thing that's not consistent is the back little portion of the property, which they would like to be consistent with their entire development. Yeah. I don't Which touches that. against commercial also at the, Which does. At the same time um, on there. And I mean, a four lane divided median highway is a, that's typically what you find commercial along. So I don't disagree with this land use plan that we made here. Uh, Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve as recommended. However, I want to caveat in that motion. I do want staff to study. Um, does it make the most sense to do that? Put the sidewalk in and then take the money from the road portion and do a payment in lieu of to get to, um, Give a good look at that. We'll look at it. But not. But it's not. But I'm not making a condition that it's required or anything. I got you. Second that motion. motion. We got a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. No. Kidoki. <coughs> Was there anything particular that you didn't like about it, Bill? Or it was, it was just a little portion on the back is the only thing. I, I just didn't know if there was something you didn't like. I think a couple of things. I think the portion on the back speaks to the land use plan, and then uh, this particular zoning is going to change that neighborhood that uh, the, the person who spoke talked about uh, the residential nature of the neighborhood. Uh -huh. And I think this, this particular zoning, based on uh, what is surrounding this particular property, will change eventually to commercial and I'm I'm hearing the voice of the property owner who spoke that's okay the s the, the s o what is that Adam? suburban office so, so it's more more office uh, than commercial.
commercial when you do commercial office is also commercial but uh, typically when we use the word commercial uh, t people tend to think retail and that's not what the land use plan contemplates here necessarily uh, in the suburban office land use designation um, my understanding also is that uh, of all the uh, homeowners in the subject I can't speak to whether this particular uh, uh, individual who called in was purposely left out or not but uh, uh, with respect to the restricted covenants they were the only property owner that did not sign for the release of the restricted covenants all the other homeowners uh, approved it were satisfied with mm -hmm. okay is there any way you would know and, and I'm, I'm just asked this question that's good, a good question yeah. is there any way you would know when it comes to the the property owners being contacted if it were 100 percent or is there any process to there make sure that happens we were uh, informed by the petitioner that they uh, in terms of 100 percent of, of contact and notification uh, people who, who are affected by the yeah the ones that were affected by it in terms of on. the uh, restricted covenants uh, again all of them signed off on the release of those restricted covenants for this track for this part these parcels here except for the one adjoining neighbor okay I can't speak to whether that adjoining neighbor was contacted and provided the opportunity to sign off on it or not or if they were intentionally left out I don't know okay okay all right okay all right we move on to <coughs> let's see 8a What is the board's pleasure on the items on the consent agenda? Mayor, make a motion to approve all consent agenda items. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Okay, we run to 8B. Oops, I'm struggling with that. We're going to 9A. That's ones we've left off of there, but we approved them all. So now we're at 10A, resolution of intent to proceed with GO bond referendum. More information about this agenda item be presented by Town Manager Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor, and hopefully our bond council, Bob Jessup, has stayed with. I uh, see him on the on Zoom. He's he's stayed with us. He's perhaps up past his bedtime, but he's here to answer any questions that the town board might have. Uh, so the purpose of this agenda item is to consider adoption of a resolution stating the intent to proceed with a general obligation bond referendum for parks and recreation and transportation construction and operation of a community center north senior center and senior center uh, yep there you go bob thanks has uh, been an objective of the parks recreation and cultural resources facility master plan and has been identified in the five-year plan as an item that could be funded with a bond referendum. The Community Center North and Senior Center are currently being designed uh, to be located within the Hilltop Needmore Town Park and Preserve and adjacent to the future site of Hilltop Needmore Road Elementary School. Construction of this facility is currently estimated at $11.5 million. In addition to this project, investments in additional greenways, additional investment in, uh, at Hilltop Needmore Town Park and Preserve and other town parks and land acquisition or construction for future town parks are possible uses of geo bond revenues. General obligation bonds allow the town to finance projects at the lowest possible cost due to pledging the full faith and credit of the town. And the town's favorable bond rating allows the town to borrow money at a very low interest rate. Under North Carolina general statutes, general obligation bonds require voter approval. An additional benefit of a general bond referendum is that it allows the town to ensure that the voter is in support of a particular project or program prior to issuing debt, which may require a tax increase to support. In the case of the community center and senior center, a tax rate increase of two and a half cents is necessary to cover the debt service and operating cost of an $11.5 million, 45,000 square foot facility. The town management and staff recommend seeking voter authorization to issue up to 18 and a half million in recreation bonds, which will provide the town flexibility in funding these and other parks and recreation priorities. Additionally, recreation bonds could be used to fund the town cash match requirement 
of a future Greenway construction grant opportunity. We talk about how we l are able to leverage and use bond funding to help us with grant applications. In addition to the $18.5 million parks and recreation facilities, town management is recommending seeking voter approval for $20 million in transportation bonds. The most recent $21 million transportation bond referendum approved in 2015 has allowed the town to leverage bond funding with a substantial amount of federal grants, which has advanced numerous transportation improvements in town, most notably Northeast Judd Parkway and, North and Main Street intersection improvements, Sunset Lake Perfway and Main Street intersection improvements, and the construction of the soon to be open Northwest Judd Parkway. While no specific project has yet been identified for the use of these funds, we certainly have a great number of transportation priorities that we've identified. It is unlikely that the town is done making transportation improvements and funding flexibility will best position the town to advance this important community priority at the lowest possible cost to the taxpayer. Again, over 75% of the respondents to our budget survey, pre-budget survey, rated transportation and infrastructure improvements as extremely or very important priority for them. The town board is asking to take action tonight on a resolution that is the first step required by the North Carolina Local Government Commission to place a referendum on the November 2nd, bless you, 2021 municipal election ballot. This action includes appointing the town manager as the authorized representative and authorizing the finance director to proceed with the application to the North Carolina Local Government Commission. The action will not be the final step by the town board, however, and the board will be able to reduce but not increase the amount for the bond referendum once beginning the process for LGC approval. So if we go with 38 and a half million, we can't, after we start the LGAC process, we can't come back and say we want 40 or 45, but we can reduce. We can say instead of 38 and a half, we want 35. Uh, although there are various financing options available for town projects, GO bonds typically bring the best interest rate and are more attractive mechanism for financing these types of projects in the financial market. The amount of GO bonds again is proposed at 18 and a half million for parks and recreation facilities and 20 million for transportation projects. The estimated debt service for these projects are, are approximately $2.4 million annually for issuance of the total amount for 20 years. This is a tax equivalent of five cents on the current tax base of $4.9 billion. Although the exact amount of debt service is unknown until issuance, management plans to minimize the impact of the tax rate with growth in other revenues and of course tax base. The only specific project identified as specifically being funded by GEO bonds at this time is the proposed in the proposed five-year plan is the proposed community center north and senior center project and the tax rate impact of debt service uh, and operations for this facility is already accounted for in the five-year plan so that's positive the recommendation to the town board this evening is by motion to approve the resolution of intent for the bond <coughs> referendum appoint me as your manager as the authorized representative and appoint sanford holzhauser llp as bond counsel and direct me as your manager and Joanne as your finance director to proceed with the application to the local government commission and execute documents in support of the bond referendum, including a public notice of intent. There is a very defined schedule for this process in order to allow it to make on schedule the November 2021 election ballot. And so uh, I would recommend that if you have any questions to the specifics of that, that we get Bob to uh, Bob or Joanne to, to speak to that. Uh, but it's very important that we stick to that regimen of schedule so that we can uh, uh, get the LGC approval or get, go through the LGC process, hopefully to get the LGC approval and get on a referendum in, or a ballot in November. I'm happy to answer any questions the board might have. Manager, um, I believe you told us to pass these two bonds or just as you just said, would be as two separate bonds and lumped together to total tax rates, 5%, being a $20 million bond, an $18.5 million bond, just simple math, half and half, that's two and a half cents on each, each side of that. But they'll be ran as and offered on there as two separate bonds. I think they both two will pass. Two separate questions. I think right. they both will pass. I think there's gonna be support for both of them. But 
the public can choose one or the other if they like if and they see like. what the, what the, what the um, impact is on the law at the same time. Correct. Yeah. I think it would be uh, good if we could have, not necessarily tonight, but at the time when we start advertising and promoting these, these bonds and the public to vote for them, to have a, a few transportation projects listed as some um Yeah, I think we'll define our, the, the marketing and, and um, uh, adv advocating. Um, there are some specific laws to that that we would have to adhere to. If you'll recall at our last transportation mm -hmm. bond that we did in 2015, there was a um, citizens group that sort of led the advocation for these bonds. And um, we would certainly um, provide information to them to help with that marketing effort. Well, we'll do something similar likely yeah. in this process. Yeah, it's a good plan. Okay. Mm -hmm. any, any other discussion? I, I just have one comment. I'd just like to reiterate what the manager pointed out is that we've used these bonds in the past to really leverage a lot of grant money and to have that availability to know we have money that we can borrow and draw from to make those grant, those grant matches has caused us to be able to do a ton of road projects and also a lot of greenway uh, improvements and, and, and construction. Uh, I think it's an excellent idea for us to try to have that money on hand that we can borrow so that we can leverage it to double or triple the money at some point. A good, a good, good example is, uh, is Judd Parkway. Um, you know, the completion sure. of Judd Parkway is Commissioner Smith yeah. is, is speaking of that. That's been a long time goal um, of this board um, and boards before it w is to complete Judd Parkway and the, the vision's now coming true. Also the um, connectivity issue with uh, pedestrians trying to walk from Verena into the Fuquay Absolutely. area. Um, that's a, I mean, that's a transportation too a transportation issue too and with the high school coming the Fuqua Brina High School moving back to its original site this next fall that's going to come into play again that's a good point um, so it, it, I, it's I think it's going to be even more so it that's will right. be even more important for the safety of those uh, young people that um, I, th I think I think we had uh, the railroad people there one day when school they were looking at something else but they were there when school let out and they got to see what an impact it was at the time. And that was when Fuqua Arena High School was still at its, um, its own site. So I think that will be really important too. We certainly hope so. Um, you need a motion on this right here. I do need a motion, but however, Mayor, uh, again, we've got Bob Jessup, our bond counsel here. My recommendation would be to at least call on him, make him say a few words, and, and, and earn it tonight since he yeah. stayed hey, up Bob. until 1030. <laughs> Bob, come on. Give us your, uh, your words of wisdom about this. What do you think the, the prevailing rate will be? Bob, still with us? Bob? Is his camera moving or is it? Froze. You know, part of uh, the advantage of living in Fuquay Verena while we're waiting on Bob is that we've got Ting Internet with broadband high speed internet. Not all areas in the state have that advantage. Perhaps Bob's area doesn't, and that's why he's frozen <laughs> up. Uh, he may want to consider relocating to Fuquay Verena in the future. Well, or get hooked up with Ting, one of the two. We're real proud of Ting and um and what it's been able to help us do in Fuquay Verena. Um, I wouldn't hold up the meeting any longer, Mayor. I think well, I, we can call present. on uh, Joanne there. I mean, she can give us a, a thought or two if you want to. To the podium, please. Mainly what you will be doing tonight is to giving us authorization to um, get this to the voters so the voters can let us know what it is that they want in the community. Um, streets and parks is the, the topic and we have to make sure we do all of this in time to get uh, to go to Wake County to get on the ballot. So this is just the very first step of it and we've got a pretty strict timeline. So. Okay, what is your interest rate? What do you predict? 
Oh, I have no clue at this particular point. Um, by the time we issue, uh, and you may do several issues, just because you know this is going to be sure. give you the authorization if the voters approve, and then when you issue uh, the rate will, you know. But right now we're seeing like one percent, one right. one point four four. Um, something like that. that. That was my point. It's pretty, yeah. pretty doggone low. Yep, it is. Okay. So, anything else? I think that's good. Thank you very much. Appreciate From the look it. of things, Bob's dial-up service might be coming in and out. Bob, can you hear us? <laughs> How about Scott back here? You seen the hands well, raised? I can hear you fine. I'm sorry. Is that, is that Bob? Come ahead, Bob. Just uh, if yeah, you I would share some ideas with us. We're just uh, yeah. Uh, um, good evening. For half, he was great. Joanne's comments were right on on target. We're starting this process now. We are starting this yeah. process now. We're, we're start, <laughs> starting the process now. I, I've got it, and, and we're going to go ahead and and uh, and take our vote, Bob. We appreciate you being here with us tonight. Um, I will certainly entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the resolution for, of intent for bond referendum for Point Town Manager's authorized representative Point Sanford Holzhauser, LLP, as bond counsel and direct the town manager and finance officer to proceed with application to the LGC and execute documents in support of the bond referendum, including a public notice of intent. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. <clears throat> Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> okay, we go to 7B. Uh, Preliminary subdivision plant, Somerville 2, Somerdale 2, SUBPR 219-08. More information about this agenda item will be presented by Town Manager Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. The purpose of this agenda item is to consider a preliminary subdivision, <coughs> excuse me, subdivision plat submitted by uh, C. Gregory Bagley called Somerdale 2, located at 131 Coley Farm Road. The submitted preliminary subdivision, Somerdale 2, is located at 131 Coley Farm Road on 6.52 acres in the residential medium density RMD zoning district. The preliminary subdivision plat proposes 38 residential lots meeting the standards for a conventional townhouse development. The minimum provided townhouse lot size is 1,825 square feet and the maximum provided townhouse lot size is 2,331 square feet. There are 3.15 acres of overall open space provided. Vehicular access to the project area is provided via a connection to Coley Farm Road. Coley Farm Road is classified in the 2035 Community Transportation Plan as a local street and is currently a 60-foot right-of-way with two lanes. One street stub will be provided to the east side of the site. <coughs> Public water and sewer are available to serve the subject properties and will be installed by the developer. Townhome developments are a permitted use in the RMD zoning district. The property has, excuse me, move back up here. The property has uh, no zoning conditions pertaining to use or character of the proposed development. The applicant and the current developer have confirmed that Somerdale two townhomes will consist of three different home plans with varied elevations. The plans will be constructed using the plans or the uh, the homes, excuse me, will be constructed using vinyl siding with masonry accents. All town homes will be two-story buildings with two-car garages. The dwelling units will consist of a mix of 24-inch and 26-inch wide units, and the overall square footage of the homes will range from 1,400 to 2,000 square feet. The proposed preliminary subdivision plat meets all town requirements. As such, management and staff are recommending approval. At the April 19th regular meeting, the planning board found the subdivision plat consistent with town requirements and voted unanimously to recommend approval to the town board. There's no fiscal note to report on this as it is a preliminary subdivision plat consideration. The recommendation to the town board this evening is by motion 
to approve the Somerdale 2 preliminary subdivision plat SUB PR 2019-08 as presented and recommended. I'm happy to answer any questions the town board may have. I think you've answered all of ours. I would entertain a motion. All right, Mayor, I make a motion to approve as recommended. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, we move to uh, 10C, preliminary subdivision plant, um, Sippa Hall Springs, SUBPR 2020-13. More information about this agenda item will be presented by Town Manager Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. The purpose of this agenda item is to consider a preliminary subdivision plat submitted by Timmins Group called Sippa Hall Springs, located at 1816 Old Bramble Lane. The submitted preliminary subdivision, Sippa Hall Springs, is on 9.48 acres in the residential medium density RMD zoning district. The preliminary subdivision plat proposes 16 residential lots meeting the standards for a conventional subdivision development. The minimum lot size permitted is 10,000 square feet and the minimum lot size provided is 10,040 square feet with the average lot size being 12,756 square feet. There are 3.62 acres of overall open space provided. Vehicular access to the project area is provided via Old Bramble Lane from the adjacent Lakestone Village subdivision. Old Bramble Lane is classified by the 2035 Community Transportation Plan as a local street maintained by the town. Public water and sewer utilities are available to serve the subject property and will be installed by the developer. Single family detached developments are a permitted use in the RMD zoning district. <coughs> the property has no zoning conditions pertaining to use or character of the proposed development. The proposed preliminary subdivision plat meets all town requirements and as such management and staff are recommending approval at the April 19th, 2021 regular meeting of the planning board. The planning board found the subdivision plat consistent with town requirements and voted unanimously to recommend approval to the town board. There's no fiscal note to report on this as it is a preliminary subdivision plat. The recommended motion to the town board this evening is to approve the Sippa Hall Springs preliminary subdivision plat SUB PR 2020-13 as presented and recommended, and I'm happy to answer any questions the board might have. I think we're good. And I'd entertain a motion on this one. Mr. Mayor, I'd motion that we approve the Sippa Hall Springs preliminary subdivision plat as presented and recommended. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We go to 10D. Preliminary subdivision plant, the preserves at Holland, SUB PR 2020-12. More information about this agenda item be presented by our town manager, Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. The purpose of this agenda item is to consider a preliminary subdivision plat submitted by Curry Engineering called the preserves at Holland, located at 0, 0, 0804, 806, 808, and 820 Holland Road. The submitted preliminary subdivision preserves at Holland is uh, on 28.28 acres in the residential low density conditional zoning district with the following condition regarding the use of the site. Uh, single family detached homes only. And there are a number of conditions that are site specific standards of the subject property. Unless the board feels otherwise, I will not review all 14 plus of these character conditions. These were approved by you in the rezoning of the property and uh, which happened not too long ago and were provided to you in your agenda materials. The, the preliminary subdivision plat, I will just note that those conditions though uh, go a long way to addressing the vision of the town board and, and character for uh, residential development in our community. The preliminary subdivision plat proposes 50 residential lots meeting the standards for conventional subdivision development. The minimum lot size permitted is 14,500 square feet and the minimum lot size proposed is 15,018 square feet with the average lot size being 20,719 square feet. There are 1.22 acres of overall open space provided. Vehicular access to the project area is provided via a connection 
to Holland Road. Holland Road is classified by the 2035 Community Transportation Plan as a 70-foot right-of-way with two lanes, sidewalk and side paths. Holland Road is currently a 60-foot right-of-way with two lanes. The development will be responsible for half of the future right-of-way dedication and construction. The addition of two stub roads will be provided, one to the west of the site and one to the east of the site. Public water and sewer utilities are available to serve the subject properties and will be installed by the developer. The proposed preliminary subdivision plat meets all town requirements and as such, management and staff are recommending approval. At the April 19, 2021 regular meeting of the Planning Board, the Planning Board found the subdivision plat consistent with town requirements and voted unanimously to recommend approval to the town board. There's no fiscal note to report on this as it is a preliminary subdivision plat. The recommendation to the town board this evening is by motion to approve the preserves at Holland preliminary subdivision plat SUBPR 2020-12 as presented recommended. I'm happy to answer any questions that the board might have. I think we're good. I'll certainly entertain a motion on this one. Mayor, I move that we approve the preserves at Holland preliminary subdivision plat as presented and recommended. Second. Second. Got a motion and a couple seconds. Uh, all in favor, signify, any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Okay. A little strain, right? Go back up one page real quick. One and a little, I forget you can't see what I'm pointing at. The little piece that touches um, Holland Road, not the big piece, but a little piece on mm -hmm. the right hand side of your map. Yep. Then on the preliminary plan, it shows that kind of cut off on there. Would that um, still have road improvements in front of that? Or yes, it will. Why, why was that cut off or not used? Just didn't need it? That's what I imagine. Go back. You can. So that, okay, it's not. So they subdivide that piece off then and kept it. Okay. So then it won't be road improvements done there. Okay. Thank you. But there would be road improvements on that piece that touches it. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Maybe they've got something else in mind right in there, probably. Pam, oh. can can you can you real quick just so we're making sure we're can you real quick speak to are there road improvements happening right in front of that piece of property? I believe that's the spot you're talking about, Mayor. The, the little piece, which makes sense, what Pam was telling me, is the little piece was. Subdivided off. Is the little piece where my arrow is? No, no, go no. Back to another, go to go right. back to another page. It's on that blue, I think he was talking about there. Is that, that little mean? black jut out that goes kind of near Pine Street? That's what I was talking about. Oh, it shows on here. I see what you're saying. I was, I was it's thinking subdivided the out there. Yeah. Okay. That's right. I'm following you. I, I was thinking the other piece. Okay, we're going to move right on to 10E. Design bill contract award fire station number four. Design bill Bobbitt construction three hundred and eighty thousand dollars. More information about this agenda item be presented by town manager Mitchell. All right, thank you, Mayor. The purpose of this agenda item is to approve the design build contract with the design build team of Bobbitt Construction Incorporated for fire station number four. During the February 1st, 2021 town board meeting, the town board approved the selection of Bobbitt Construction Incorporated as a design build team to design and construct fire station number four. During this meeting, the town board also authorized uh, me as your manager to enter into contract negotiations with Bobbitt Construction. Since receiving authorization from the town board, management and staff have worked diligently with Bobbitt Construction to negotiate the design build contract for fire station number four project. The proposed design build agreement includes information relating to town, which is the owner, and the contractors, the design builder obligations on pre-construction services, resulting in site and building plans for permitting. Town staff have identified the following milestone components of the agreement, issued the notice to proceed, schematic design, this is eight weeks after notice to proceed, that's the deliverable. Design development, that's 10 weeks after comments received on schematic design as a deliverable. Construction documents, 12 weeks after comments on design development with a total design time of no more than 30 weeks. After approval of the design build contract, management and staff will begin working with the design build team on fire station for design. 
Once the project milestones have been reached and completed, management staff will come back to the town board with a construction cost for consideration and approval. Once the contract amendment has been approved, the substantial completion date will be set for 240 calendar days from the date of receipt of all permits and notice to proceed. <coughs> management and staff and the town attorney, and I want to just note that uh, the town attorney has spent a considerable amount of time working on this as this is our first design build contract, have reviewed and recommended approval of the contract as presented. Uh, as a fiscal note, if approved by the town board, funding for the design build contract will come from the fire station number four project fund. The proposed $380,000 for the design build fee uh, is, and that gets us to the point of uh, uh, construction documents, is within the fire station number four project budget. An amendment to the contract will be presented at a later date that addresses cost of construction. The recommendation to the town board this evening is by motion to approve the design build contract for fire station number four in the amount of $380,000 as presented and recommended, subject to town attorney review as to form. I would entertain a motion on this. Mayor, so moved. It's good to get this fire station under construction. Second. What's the possibility we paint the whole building red? <laughs> <laughs> Just not Carolina blue like that right. little blue fire truck up there. Is we got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. We're going to slip on to 11A. Uh, Adam, you want to comment on I'll any of those? i to be brief. Uh, our inspections department issued 180 new single family home permits in April. <clears throat> Thus far for the calendar year, four months in, 682 single family permits issued. Public utilities, our new combo uh, uh, truck was delivered last week. It's, it's a big monster. Uh, the utility department employees are being trained on this new piece of equipment prior to it being deployed into service. And we'll try to for share some pictures or maybe even give a tour of that truck at some point. I'm sure at some point it'll be going to preschools and elementary schools and touring around once COVID uh, allows for it to. It's a pretty impressive piece of equipment. Uh, downtown development, new pavers are, well, were installed by the downtown kiosk on South Main Street. The contractor quality of work is good and the work improved all, overall grading. Uh, as it relates to the Arts Center, we just completed a successful weekend of town dance recitals. Dance recitals from other dance studios coming are coming in the next uh, few months. And mm -hmm. the new Bengal Cubs are around, out and around town. If you haven't seen those yet, there's a total of eight to be found. Rental requests for picking up, and there's very few registration spots left for adult and kid summer camps and classes. Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Resources, the Hilltop Need More Town Park renovation project. Uh, the notice to proceed has been signed, and the contractor will begin renovation work on May 10th. As it relates to our IT department, they've been very busy in setting up our boardroom for tonight's meeting to allow us to um, begin taking small steps back to a um, pre-COVID meeting environment. So I want to give uh, Scott and his uh, team recognition for a lot of hard work that was crammed in a very short period of time. Good job, Scott. You all remember what this room looked like just a week and a half ago at our budget workshop mm -hmm. and to make all the spaghetti cords and whatnot for, for the most part go away was a pretty mm -hmm. impressive feat. Uh, and then as far as finance goes, uh, I got to recognize Joanne, Nicole, and the whole finance department team for their efforts and hard work. Uh, they've been busy with the budget and, and, again, also preparing the bond referendum materials for tonight's agenda. The budget document, as a reminder, in its uh, totality will be available for public inspection beginning tomorrow morning on the town's website. The project status report. Yep. Give Joanne. There's Joanne and Nicole a hand. You know, that is a, uh, a very tedious job, and, you know, getting your budget to balance at the end is is really challenging and, and um, just thank you so much Joanne and your team. Uh, project status report was included and provided in your agenda, agenda materials uh, for uh, this month May of 2021. Uh, if you haven't had the opportunity yet take a look at that a lot of activity happening right now. Uh, COVID-19 testing site will be at Fleming Loop Park May 6th through 9th from 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, 
A ribbon cutting will be this Friday at 10 a.m. Uh, for the Northwest Judd Parkway. This will be at the intersection of Highway 42 and Northwest Judd Parkway. U.S. Congresswoman Deborah Ross, North Carolina Department of Transportation Secretary Eric Boyette, uh, North Carolina Senator Sidney Batch, and North Carolina House of Representative Member Aaron Perre will be joining us for this grand opening, as well as other invited uh, guests. And this is, again, a uh, milestone uh, completion project for the town of Fuquay Arena. It's going to be very exciting to have this uh, this ribbon cutting, and traffic will be on it just as soon as the event is over with. We're turning it loose. All right. You know the um, the amazing thing um, to me uh, is the length of time that we stayed the course. Our town stayed the course to complete this, and our consultants. Um, have told us this is the number one traffic thing that we can do mm -hmm. to equalize traffic all around Fuquay Verena. Um, the intersections were important, don't get me wrong about those intersections, but the equalization of the flow of traffic will help those intersections too. Absolutely. And finally, there will be a COVID-19, not testing site, but vaccine clinic. Uh, that will be hosted by Wake County at the Southern Regional Center May 10th through 14th. So if you know of anyone who hasn't gotten that vaccine yet but wishes to do so, tell them to go check out wakegov.com uh, wake forward slash vaccine so that they can find out information and get registered for uh, the that. The 10th through the 14th is five, that's five days. That's, that's correct. A, yeah. That's correct. And so that's going to be a, a great opportunity for people to get the vaccine locally if they wish to do so. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I've got no additional comments to report on this evening. Okay, thank you very much, Adam. Thank you. Um, I'm pretty sure we've got a closed session uh, tonight. So- um, Can we move it to next time? Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, you have any words of wisdom? For no, I can get a closed session, no, thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Smith. No comments tonight, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, Commissioner Harris. No comments. Commissioner Wunsch. I was going to say it was good to be at the town concert again. That was fun. It, it was. Yeah, the other night. And, um, That's uh, good, yeah. Spare change. Yes. Yeah. Go to the conference. Uh, Commissioner Gardner. I just wanted to, to say when we were talking about the bond issue, I didn't think to bring up that there is a group of seniors, a pretty good sized group of seniors, that have advocated a long time for that senior center. And I know they will be glad to that we've started that process tonight. Yeah. And the other thing is, um, Fuqua Arena downtown had their annual On Plain Air um, event this last weekend, and there was a, a, a lot of beautiful art, and it was a lot of fun, and even in spite of the rain, yeah. it, it was it was a, a, a good project and, a, and another good weekend for Fuqua. I even heard somebody talking about maybe a large, um, on plain air, the, the possibility of holding a large on plain air in this part of the county and trying to get 200 artists to paint oh, and wow. get some kind of Guinness record or something like that. Would that be fun or what? It's, it, it would be very exciting. And how much money was raised, Marilyn? You know? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, okay. I'm not sure of that. The, the bidding closed at 8 o'clock on Saturday night, so I haven't heard the details the yet. unique thing about this particular program is that the artist gets um, half of the money mm -hmm. and then the downtown association um, gets the other half of the money and it's a huge fundraiser uh, for downtown the downtown association and I I love that it kind of centered around our art center um, you know, most of, or much of the activity um, was there. And um, and it's difficult this last two years because uh, everything's had to be uh, virtual, um, except we did have the artist reception at the, at the Arts Center, right. uh, and that was really nice. Okay, um, anything else? Is that got you for right That's now? That's it. Okay. Well, except I have something in closed session. Okay. Um, 
let's see here, Campo meetings and uh, and all we got. Luku mayors, Metro mayors. Uh, um, this was really a neat thing. I went to the Lincoln Heights Environmental Connection and Reward presentation of the Watershed Stewardship uh, School Award um, that Lincoln Heights, that was won at Lincoln Heights. And it was really a nice program. Um, and I was very appreciative of, of all that, um, that were there uh, that participated um, in it. It was, it was just a very nice, nice event. Uh, upcoming, we've got the ribbon cutting of uh, Northwest Judd Parkway at 10 a.m. on Friday um, morning. And a big deal, I hope everybody can be there. I appreciate it if you, if you could. And uh, we got the metro, we probably won't be able to be involved in that, Adam, <laughs> at the same time, the metro mayor's call. And then the Chamber of Commerce ribbon cutting for uh, promotional partners in Apex, that is, um, oh man. It's Olivia. Who? Olivia? Olivia. 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 Scott. Olivia. Olivia. Scott. Scott. Um, and I plan to, uh, to go to that if, if there's any way possible that I can, I can be there. Um, and then we have the Mayor's Association, another Metro Mayor's meeting. Uh, coming up after that. Okay. Um, I will entertain a motion that we go into closed session um, to discuss um, personnel. May I make a motion to go to closed session for A3 and A6, attorney client privilege? We've got a motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Let's take about a five-minute break, if that suits everybody. Quick five. It's getting late.